more than a roof over the heads of those in need. Take a look. It's a city known for its barbecue and blues, but just minutes from the hustle and bustle of Beale Street, Memphis, Tennessee is also home to a vibrant yet vulnerable transgender community that faces social and economic challenges. We're in the Bible Belt of the South, and it's a, it's a red state in terms of housing access and discrimination, employment access and discrimination. There's no real legal protections for trans people. Nationally, one in five trans individuals is said to have experienced homelessness at some point in their life, and nearly a third live in poverty. Those figures are even higher when you account for race. I was born and raised here in Memphis, Tennessee. When Kayla Gore was just 23 and newly transitioning, she experienced homelessness while living 1,500 miles from the city where she grew up. It was very, very scary. After returning to Memphis, she entered a transitional housing program and began working without Memphis, the local LGBTQ community center. During that time, Kayla says she started to see a lot of trans and queer people kicked out of their homes at the age of 18, some rejected by their families. While there are services for individuals experiencing home insecurity in Memphis, many are faith-based. There's lots of anti-LGBTQ rhetoric, and more importantly, a lot of those shelters are separated by sex assigned at birth. You're forced into a situation of either outing yourself or staying closeted in an environment where you could be incredibly unsafe. There's also a lot of trans folks of color here, so then you also kind of double down with racism. They have a lot stacked up against them. The pandemic exacerbated that. A survey by the Trevor Project found last year more than 80% of trans and non-binary youth said COVID-19 led to a more stressful living situation. Hoping to change that, Kayla, who'd been able to purchase her own home, which she shared with others who found themselves experiencing homelessness, founded My Sister's House. We wanted to provide like a space where people can thrive and they can actually start to grow um, and heal the trauma that they had you know, experienced in their youth. Originally a word of mouth program, my sister's house aimed to provide emergency services and shelter to trans and queer people of color. It's for us by us, like it's trans people at the helm of it and it's from a perspective of someone who's been there. I was homeless as a youth, so I, I remember what it was like being vulnerable. As my sister's house evolved, so did their mission. Now the group is aiming to build 20 homes for trans women in Memphis. It's safe to say that I did not come from a background of building houses or working with plumbing and electrical, uh, but it is safe to say that I came from a family that had really love and compassion for the community that they live in. Originally planning to build tiny homes, they're now renovating existing homes because of the rising costs of everything, including lumber. Using a lottery of individuals they previously helped, recipients get more than a shelter, they actually own the house. It's a different feeling when you um, have your own place. Jeanette Adams moved into her home just a few months ago. It's a tiny house, but it, you know, it's big to me. Jeanette had been living with her mom and has a supportive family, but being able to live on her own has boosted her confidence. I felt free. A lot of people, especially trans women, we don't get a chance to own anything. Kayla says that's exactly what she's hoping to provide those selected to receive a house. Trans people are boxed out of economics in so many different ways that we have to build our own economics. This is how people built generational wealth 100 years ago where their families had small homes. So it's nothing new that we're doing. It's just that we're doing a unique thing for a community that really deserves it. Just a couple miles from Jeanette's home, crews are replacing the electrical system at another property. This will be our fifth house that will be occupied. Modi James will soon call this two-bedroom home her own sanctuary. I'm ecstatic about it because it would be mine. It's my, it would be my home, not my house. Modi says she does not feel safe in her current living arrangements. I've been trying to get a home on my own. They take you to the ringer and they expensive. I see nothing and I live nothing but poverty. I'm trying to overcome it. LGBTQ advocates in Memphis say my sister's house is giving people more than a place to live. It also created visibility and hope and inspiration for the trans community and for trans people of color here in the South that just wasn't there before. If I had the opportunity to receive the resources that we provide today, I couldn't imagine what my life would be like. Kayla hopes to expand and replicate what my sister's house has done in other cities. She also hopes the program has something of an expiration date.
I would want the legacy of my sister's house to be that we came, we conquered, and we disappeared because we no longer were needed. My sister's house operates mostly through donations and grants. A GoFundMe for the group has generated more than $300,000. Kayla says they have a goal to build and renovate 20 homes by the end of next year. Coming up, Craig chats with the sole openly gay professional baseball player in the league. Plus, this cattle ranch has become a social media sensation for its grass-fed beef and the queer farmers behind the brand. Stay with us. Baseball, America's favorite pastime. We might sing Take Me Out to the Ball Game, but it's a profession that only has one out player, Brian Ruby. Craig recently caught up with Brian to hear about his experiences as a gay professional baseball player and how his dad's support has made all the difference. Take a look. Meet Brian Ruby, the only openly gay professional baseball player in the United States. Brian first came out publicly last season while playing independent baseball for the Salem Kaiser Volcanoes in Oregon. I decided that I'd come out to my teammates last season by lacing up with rainbow shoelaces during Pride Month. I considered it more like inviting in than coming out. Yep, this is who I am. You threw me one curveball. Brian's dad, John, whose last name the family would like to keep private, was Brian's high school baseball coach and, as to be expected, has always been his son's biggest fan. When did you know that Brian was going to be the baseball player? Something clicked around six or seven and he got passionate about baseball and we were always on the baseball field. John had some success of his own on the diamond, playing Division I ball as a pitcher at the University of Pennsylvania and then overseas in Australia. That experience led him to have some initial fears about his son's baseball career when Brian shared his plans to go public about his sexuality. In your heart of hearts, did you think it would change his opportunities? I was worried about how he would be perceived in that world. There were a million things running through my mind but what I wanted him to know in that moment was, I'm good, and you're good. And he wasn't just good, he was great. After tying up his rainbow laces and coming out to his teammates in the public overall, Brian's batting average skyrocketed a full 90 points. So what was it like last season? I don't know if I'm gonna get applauded when I run onto the field or if, I'm going to be in the batter's box and get hit by a 93 mile an hour fastball in the head. The real thing that happened was I got a hit, you know, my first at bat and got on base and the pitcher tipped his cap and I just gave him a little tip back and that peer to peer on field recognition was by far the most meaningful thing 
in the game of baseball. And Brian's not only talking openly about his own story, he's also co-founder of Proud to Be in Baseball, an organization that supports and advocates for ball players of all ages who are looking for gay mentors in the sport. Brian's work with Proud to Be in Baseball has taken him around the country to attend Pride events at a number of MLB ballparks. In September of 2021, he was invited to sing the national anthem at Dodger Stadium. In addition to being a, a, quite, the, quite the baseball player, you're a, you're a budding country music star. I always loved country music, and uh, I've been writing songs. I always have my guitar on the road during baseball, playing on the team bus. I mean, which do you enjoy more, baseball or, or country music? <laughs> I gotta be careful because the baseball coach is. I don't know, you're good. <laughs> you're good. It sounds like you're it's good. neck and neck. Look, you can only be a baseball player for so long. That's true. I would imagine, Dad, you have to be quite proud. What I'm most proud about with Brian in general is he just goes for it. I mean, what do you want to see from your kids? You want to see them thrive. I mean, you know that's a testament to good parenting, too. Uh, I mean, that's what I hear. When we come back, the spotlight is on LGBTQ youth and the generational shift of coming out in this digital world. Stay with us. Welcome back. Now we focus on the future and the advances the next generation is making when it comes to coming out. I sat down with five students at the University of Central Florida to hear about their experiences with coming out. Take a look. They're called Gen Z, but many young adults proudly embrace five other letters, LGBTQ. I'm a lesbian. I'm gay. I'm bisexual. I'm transgender. I'm queer. A recent Gallup poll found that among Gen Z adults, those between the ages of 18 and 25, about 21% identify as LGBTQ. 21%, that's one in five. When you heard that number, what was your reaction? I really wasn't surprised. Our generation isn't really scared to actually say that we're part of the community and we're actually proud of who we are. With the help of Campus Pride, a national group supporting LGBTQ college students, we gathered this group of Gen Zers, Eddie, Nick, Marcus, Sierra, and Mary. They go to the University of Central Florida and are part of the first generation to totally grow up in a digital world. 
Social media, how important was that to you when you were younger? Oh, social media, it was like everything to me because it really helped me form a sense of myself. I remember writing in my diary as a kid that I had a crush on a boy just over and over and over just to pray that eventually I'll convince myself that I do. And I got introduced to these online communities and I finally saw, oh wait, I'm not a freak. There are people out there who feel the same way that I do. And that realization saved my life. And I don't want to add more stress to your day, but I love you. They could also see themselves reflected in traditional media, movies, and TV shows. Growing up and seeing even the smallest bits of representation in like LGBTQ plus characters and everything of that sort is just made me feel, you know, like not alone. And it made me feel like kind of understood. And perhaps no endorsement had a greater impact than the one delivered by the Supreme Court in 2015. Now to that historic Supreme Court decision legalizing same-sex marriage across the land. All of it creates a sense of belonging that mental health experts say is vital. The messaging that Gen Zers have is like it's okay to be who you are and to love who you love and to talk about that and celebrate that. A majority of LGBTQ Gen Zers say they're bisexual, and among those five letters, a growing number of young people identify as queer, which is perhaps most simply defined as not straight. I present as a boy, but I love pink or I love like feminine things, but at the same time, I could also like masculine things, and I don't need to be in that set like binary. For your generation, it's easier to come out than say my generation. But it's not easy, is it? No, no definitely not. Mm -hmm. For me, coming out was always sort of like bouncing off a brick wall and bouncing off the brick wall and bouncing and bouncing until eventually I can make a dent. I feel like there's this huge disconnect. Oh, being queer is like a trend, but these are people's identities. These are people really putting themselves on the line and putting themselves in a place where they could be in danger. All of them grew up in more conservative communities in Florida. It's a state that's making headlines this year for passing legislation that prohibits classroom instruction on sexual orientation and gender identity for many younger students. We're going to make sure that parents are able to send their kid to kindergarten without having some of this stuff injected into their school curriculum. What critics call the don't say gay law. Now you're just trying to control and minimize us and just kind of shove us back even more, but I think it only just kind of makes us push back harder. So when you look at the future, do you have optimism? Yes, definitely. We have always been here and now we are saying we're here. We are letting the world know that we accept ourselves, we love ourselves, and we're not going to back down. One major reason it's easier for younger people to come out, society is more accepting. 70% of Americans now approve of same-sex marriage. And here's a really important stat about acceptance. LGBTQ youth who have at least one accepting adult in their lives were 40% less likely to report a suicide attempt. According to Harvard's Life in Rural America surveys, less than 5% of the rural population identifies as LGBTQ. But Bastrop Cattle Company is working to change that. The grass-fed beef brand has taken TikTok by storm, amassing millions of views and likes about their grass-fed beef while influencing a new generation of farmers within the ranching community. Take a look. The first video that I made ended up going viral for about 9 million views on TikTok. And it's just me yelling at cows. Normally me being sassy with them because some of them are just real troublemakers. Come on, girls! I did not expect that people would be so interested in uh, just a gay man yelling at cows. That gay man is Max Kremke. He, along with husband Brandon Raisler and Patty Jacobs, own Bastrop Cattle Company. This trio is changing outdated stereotypes of cattle ranchers. Their farmhouse is even pink. I think that rural Texas gets painted with a broad brush, that it's going to be uh, intolerant or, or traditional. I get the sense uh, from a lot of people in certain areas that they don't see that many uh, uh, gay ranchers around. And it is, uh, it is really interesting because uh, everybody's been very warm and accepting. There are some decent numbers of women that are going back into farming and ranching. And there's always been kind of a history of women ranching in Texas. Y'all be nice. 
The ranch has been in the family since 1970, and I grew up here. Patty left the ranch for two decades after college, but then decided to come back home, taking over the family ranch in 2006. Patty and brother Cleve transitioned it to an entirely grass-fed operation. <laughs> calves are born here. So the majority of the animals have always been here their entire lives. They're really bred to live on this ranch and get the most out of the grass that we have here. As Patty and Cleve were growing their herd, Cleve died of lung cancer in 2013. Patty needed more hands to run the farm. I ran for office and met uh, Max's husband, Brandon. And pretty soon, Brandon was helping me with the business, even though we lost the campaign. And we just kind of grew it from there. And then Max came into it about three years ago. City boy, uh, never ever thought that I would be living out in rural Texas. Hey, Elijah. Hey, big boy. Hey, big boy. I met my husband about 11 years ago, and he was from a small town, and I'm from Austin. We immediately fell in love. We knew that we were the right one for each other. And it was uh, so interesting because he's always been really passionate about cattle ranching. <laughs> Bastrop's cattle are raised without hormones or antibiotics on chemical-free pastures. The trio selectively breed the animals to thrive in central Texas, from enduring drastic weather changes to scavenging for local plants. And we call our cows hustlers. Um, because we expect them to hustle. They eat the grass, but they also eat the oak leaves, they eat uh, cactus. The labor-intensive process yields beef that is well-marbled and tender despite the cow's grass-only diet. For nearly a decade, Bastrop sold most of its premium meat to restaurants, but demand shifted radically during the pandemic. We had to pivot within a two-week period to 100% direct, and then we were backed up six months. We didn't know if we could ship beef. I was delivering all of the beef myself. Now we're in a completely different area. We're boxing it and we're shipping it and we could get it anywhere in Texas in two days. Max's background in film production and marketing helped support their new venture. He built a new website and launched a social campaign targeted at a new demographic. A lot of places that we saw do uh, kind of like what I'd consider to be like man meat. We actually kind of chose to go a different way on ours by being more inclusive in terms of our brand language and how we try to appeal. We try to direct it more towards the woman in the household because they're the ones who are going to be making the decision about what goes in that freezer. Customers really love knowing where their beef comes from and so they keep on coming back and we're happy to have them. But it's not only sales that have grown for Bastrop, their ranch is famous on TikTok. Max's TikTok account is more than 4 million likes. He's hoping to inspire a new generation of more diverse farmers by sharing his love for agriculture. You my sweet, sweet boy. You let me rub around on your horns. You let me go under the chin. Whenever somebody's like, oh, uh, you really inspire me as a gay man doing this, which I'm not trying to do that. I like, I'm not setting out to be like, I'm an icon and a hero for being a rancher. What I think is really important is just trying to normalize that idea of it, normalize the fact that it's not just one type of person that's yeah. involved. It's everybody is invited. All of the women, the gays, everybody else getting involved in agriculture is actually providing a lot of new energy and new innovation. Unlike Max, Brandon prefers to stay out of the spotlight and focus on caring for the herd. The trio built a business that feels more like a family. We kind of yeah. take care of each other and believe in the same sort of the same sort of ethics and moral. Patty hopes that Max and Brandon will eventually take over the business as the two share Patty's vision of farming her family's land for years to come. There's something special about this. It's not just that I'm a woman and he's gay. We want something that we can feel comfortable with, that we can steward on through and continue doing it, where it's a, a brand that you've heard about for a really long time and you know that you can depend on it. Our Pride special continues after the break.
Welcome back. From lipstick to eyeshadow, beauty products allow users to feel like better versions of themselves. And now the world of beauty is more expansive with the rise of gender inclusive beauty brands. Take a look. For years, the beauty industry has marketed products towards an exclusive audience. So, how come you're putting lipstick on? The girls always got to look. But now, gender-inclusive beauty brands are redefining beauty standards beyond the binary. When we speak about gender inclusivity um, and gender expansive identities, what we really mean by that is that anybody can express any aspect of their self as they'd like regarding gender. Laura Kraber was inspired by her experience as a parent to create We Are Fluid in 2018. I've just been so inspired by the young people who are leading a societal shift and creating a more expansive expansive understanding of gender identity. I just felt like now was the time to create a brand that was welcoming to people of all skin tones, all gender expressions, all gender identities. Laura was on to something. 69% of Gen Z and millennials are looking for more brands that offer gender-inclusive products, according to a report from Ypulse, a youth marketing research company. Now many are turning frustration into fuel to start their own beauty brands. I was inspired to create Dragon Beauty after being a little frustrated that the beauty industry wasn't reflecting someone like myself as a trans woman in the marketplace. I feel like beauty really needs to match the world. The world is colorful and people come in an array of a spectrum and in different sizes, shapes, ethnicities, you name it. Patrick Starr created One Size to encourage kindness and expression. It's important for me to share the voices of the unseen and the unheard in my community because once upon a time, I was one of those customers. I was scared to buy makeup. I felt like I was going to be judged. I felt like no one was going to accept me. The One Size brand mission is to represent everyone through beauty. Makeup is a one size fits all. To keep up with high demand, these brands are shifting their focus to incorporate inclusivity and representation from products to marketing and beyond. We really need to champion those that are unconventional and different. I think we're all tired of seeing the same type of model again and again. I think we're living through a moment where that is really changing. And I think in 10 years, we'll see even more change. For me, it's so important to have trans models, to have models of color, to have a workspace that reflects room that I want to be in. For these founders, personal experience led to products that are changing the world of beauty for the better. I was wanting to look in the mirror and see the woman that I felt inside. These beauty products really helped me find who I was and have always been my protective armor in facing the world. I wasn't born like this. I didn't get to wake up like this. But if I can put on a little bit of sequins and lashes and lipstick, I can really feel confident in being who I really want to be. And that's for everybody too. Through their efforts, gender inclusive brands are redefining what beauty should be and reminding the world how beauty should make you feel. Thank you for joining me this half hour to celebrate Pride is Universal. I'm Joe Fryer. We'll see you next time on Today All Day. One thing Maine is known for, it's the lobster. Yeah. And today you are in for a treat. We're taking, we're talking lobster tater tots. Ooh, we got a special delivery from my favorite restaurant. The founders of Cousins Maine Lobsters, Savin Lomac and Jim Salikas are here, everybody. Woo. Hi, guys. Let me let you know something. You will never untaste this. No, I know. It's I'm gonna excited. It's going to sit in your mouth for a long time. Oh, you've had our food before? Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. I've I'm, seen him at our restaurant too uh, many times. Exactly. He's a stalker. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, listen. I love this combination. Tater tots and lobster. It's what so do we start with? It's so tater good. Tater tots. Are tater so healthy, tots. You know? it's like, yes. We're going to start with a cilantro lime sauce. Okay. Today, and you guys are doing everything. So yes. We have let's do it. Lime juice, chipotle, cilantro. Okay. And we just and throw some it all in there. You throw it all in there. Let's see how we can work together. You guys, nice it's work, such guys. A team. Yeah, I, I like all what's like going guys. on over there. You're, 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 nice work. And then we put that on, and, and of course, we're going to. you want to make it a little milder, because I know sometimes the chipotle yeah. will scare people. Take, we'll take the seeds out of obviously the jalapenos. Oh, and, you is that know, how to, it to bring down the heat. Yogurt and sour cream. Yogurt, sour cream, and mayo. So we'd mix wow. these two into here. Okay. 
Unless you want to do it. Yes. Yeah, good, get yes. It. Come on, let's get some action like, over here. Let's see some movement, guys. Oh, 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 oh. Nice work, nice work. Jenna, you want to uh, put it all together? It right oh, wow. Yes, that's right. good. That's this, perfect. This, you're, and this is you're the sauce charge. for the tops. This is the, yep. Yep. I have some in my finger. Mm. This is so good. Okay. So that's our cilantro lime sauce we're going to use. And when that is done, yes. come on, bring it on down. We're going to the down. pico de gallo. Okay. Which is just adding the white onion, cilantro, and jalapeno into one. I like that you have bowl. kind of a Texas vibe with your lava stuff. Yeah. yeah. We had to have a little spice, so obviously well, she's going yeah, salt. She's salt going salt. Oh, Y'all yeah. don't put a little salt well, in hey, hey, you your your show. Show. Your yeah. recipe. <laughs> We're just here. <laughs> Give me some more salt. A little bit of lime juice. A little more salt. A little more salt. Okay, yeah, well, he's wow. from Louisiana. We like the salt. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to go down here. <laughs> <laughs> and that's so our pico de guy with a little bit of lime juice, and then it is. It's, it's time for Maine. Our Maine. Time for Maine okay. to shine. And we've been ready for Maine to show we've up. We've been Maine. Yeah, so here we are with a little bit of uh, lemon butter in the skillet. Lemon butter. And oh, Ooh. by the way, lemon butter, that's bougie. That's that is bougie. bougie. Wait, okay, I have a question. Lobster's kind of expensive. Is there ways, like, can you buy, would you ever buy it frozen or no? We, we, we buy everything from Maine. Okay. Um, you know, and, and here's the thing. If you can if you can get lobster, get it wherever you want. You yeah. Know, we, we always say buy Maine lobster. Yes. But, you know, just indulge yourself yes. and treat yourself. We call it an affordable luxury. And it's like a once a year, you know, a fancy date night once dish. A year. Well, I know. I'm <laughs> <laughs> unless, you're, unless you're our mother. <laughs> so he's been having <laughs> San Tropez. It oh. sounds like Justin, and when he wakes up at 1.30 in the morning, yeah. that's when he's having, or in the uh, afternoon, yeah. that's when he's having lobster. 100% yeah. with yeah. some yeah. caviar yeah. and champagne. His it's life. You guys are like this, shrimp. Yeah. It's, like you, it's like a quick cook. Like quick shrimp. cook. You're just putting, a, you're Very taking quick. the chill off of it. So we're done with that. So what you would do here is the finished product, which is the tater tots. And then we go with the lobster meat. We throw that on top. Okay. Yeah. Mess away. Generous, generous portions. Be generous. Be generous. Be generous. Yeah, yeah. Be generous. Put the whole thing on there. Okay. And then pico and cilantro lime sauce. So Ooh. it's like a real throw the pico on? On our food trucks and our restaurants, mm -hmm. this is one of the most popular shareable items. Because yes. it's, you know, kind of, you can get a lobster roll, you can get some chips. You yes. share. I'm no. not sharing yeah, this yeah, with yeah. anybody. Are you going to share this with anyone? Not including her today, okay? He likes oh. to eat it himself. Oh. Wait, yes. now, y'all, where are your food trucks? Are they everywhere? Yeah, we're in 26 states throughout the country. Wow. We have 40 trucks that we've franchised throughout the nation and 10 restaurants as well. So oh my gosh, if so you guys aren't doing anything later, yeah. you want to open a truck or restaurant, let us know. Actually, maybe we should go into business should together. We should we open hey. a truck? Yes. Yes. Do we just become best friends? Yes. I think so. I Let's go. Done. Thank you. Okay. All right, enough of Jimmy. You okay. guys need to try it. Okay, come on, try it. I'm going to try it, and then we're going to make something I'm really excited about. This is a little Texas, you, a little Maine. You, you guys eat. I'll explain. Mm -hmm. We're making lobster quesadillas, so we wanted to. Mm -hmm. we, our first food truck mm -hmm. was in California and Los Angeles, so we wanted to have a little bit mm -hmm. of a flair, not just lobster rolls. Mm -hmm. And these are really easy to make at home. So mm -hmm. you're gonna put your tortilla right down on the skillet mm -hmm. in a hot pan, maybe some spray or a little butter. In this instance, we didn't do anything. Yeah. It kinda looks like a pizza coming to life right oh, now. I love yeah. Pizza. yeah, it does. Uh, <laughs> all right, so you wanna throw some cheese onto this guy? Sure, sure. All right, you wanna throw some lobster onto this? Uh, yes. so I had a feeling. All right, so let's put lobster, just just get crazy with yeah. it. Yeah. And Can you put it on one side or we, do you? You know, it's it's your world. Okay, We've perfect. learned that you guys are just doing your own thing Well, that's today. true. And so, evidently you pay our light bills in uh, yeah. West Hollywood yeah. for the restaurant. So <laughs> oh, thank 100%. You. <laughs> All right, and by the way, we never get lobster like this. Can you hand me that lobster over there too? Oh yeah, you're not gonna. <laughs> He's, believe me, you think my man's yeah. gonna, wow. gonna fold put it, it over. with cards? You went over, guys, you gotta fold. Fold it over. Fold. It's more that's like a, little, a calzone. That's what I was going to say. Side, but, it's you know, huge. You know, yeah. Do you uh, have to flip this thing? or You have to flip it. And you kind of just. It, I'm going to open it so my man can eat well, it without the carbs. Yeah, he doesn't, well, he doesn't put, put like 16 His pounds body of is a temple. <laughs> this, is not not, today. this is not a true representation of how much lobster meat is in the case. <laughs> yeah, this is just insanity. In there. <laughs> All right, so a nice flip. Ooh, okay, okay, afterwards, the same sauce we're going to drizzle over, which Jim left on the other side of the table. Oh, my bad. So be good at guy. Thank you. Thank you. Is it so delicious? Oh, my gosh. You got to try this. Jenna's already eating. She doesn't mm -hmm. even care about the rest of the mm -hmm. recipe. By the way, who am I kidding? This is not mine. This is mine. Oh, <laughs> wow. That would have been amazing. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Mm. And to get these recipes, head today.com slash food. Two recipes that will help cut out the fat. But these are recipes that are still delicious, right? Yes, absolutely. So in my house, we are strict adherence to Taco Tuesday. And, and, done, and isn't that a good day? Taco Tuesday. It's oh, like right. you wake up, the kids wake up in the morning, it's like, it's Taco Tuesday. Yes, and then the 
whole day is good. Everything's Everybody's happy. Yeah. Everybody's happy. So this is actually, we make a tater tot taco casserole. Mm. That sounds it delicious. It is divine, we're, but we can't be doing that every day. Oh, so, okay. so what we excited, did, though. we're doing a quinoa sweet potato taco. Okay. Oh, wow. It's absolutely wonderful. We're going to roast these vegetables. We, of course, want to put a little bit of olive oil. Mm -hmm. We're going to do a little bit of salt and then toss that around. That'll go into an oven 350 degrees, you know, just until they're super. Now, with your sweet potatoes, not to cut you off, you, now, how do you cut them? What's your, what's your secret? Oh, okay. I've, I've well, so it. first we're going to peel them. And yes, they are. They're not the easiest thing. But what you always want to remember is that you're going to need to give it a flat side. If you've got something that rolls and yeah. you've got fingers that can get involved in a really sharp knife. Oh, yep. Honey, I'm, I'm sorry. That's, that's, that's the reason you eat the tater tots right, right there. Yeah. Okay. It's always a flat side. So then side. a tater flat tater side. So now we would go here. <laughs> Do you see go. how much easier that is? Mm -hmm. right. And now we have our nice oh, little tater tots. Pieces. Exactly. Flat yeah. side if it rolls. Onions, all that. So... We are going to saute some vegetables. We right. have red onions and peppers. Mm -hmm. That's going into a nice hot pan. We want to cook that down until it gets super wilted, get that flavor going. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things, taco seasoning has more sodium in it. I mean, if I eat it the next day, I cannot get my rings off. Wow. My face is because. so bloated. Just I can't really? even open my eyes. So you make your own. So I make my own. So we have, um, and we're going to do it in this sour cream. You okay. could always do Greek yogurt if you wanted to. Um, we have a little bit of salt. Cumin and chili powder, oh, cilantro, cilantro. and a little lime a juice. Lime? Yeah. Oh. And now we're going to mix that up. So now we're going to get away from all that sodium mm -hmm. chemical laden uh. taco season packet and oh, yeah. um, roll right over That's here. Good. What's the verdict, guys? That's it's delicious. You got my microwave there. Oh, oh gosh, thank you, honey. That's my best tip. Yeah. Um, so if you have an avocado that is hard as a rock, yes. mm -hmm. you yes. can stick it in the microwave for 10 seconds, no longer. Ten seconds. It'll ripen and it, it up. will be soft. Stop wow. it! Stop it! I'm not kidding you. This was worth the whole thing. Softball. Oh, I'm serious. This Here. is ten right. seconds. In the microwave. This is like guacamole every day. I know. Well, you know, that is. It's going to be trouble go. for us. Hold on. All right. How do we do it? Well, really you know what? Let's, let's get okay, to the lobster pasta. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like Roker, you work on that, Roker. We so what, what, what do we have here? One of my most favorite things in the world Everybody is a lobster hard. macaroni and cheese. I'm obsessed. Ready next week. But again, we can't do that every day. So we're going to switch out. We're going to do a spaghetti squash lobster pasta. Isn't it wonderful? With a lot of spring vegetables. I mean, we are really, you know, we're getting there. And Give it two you, more seconds. What? Oh, it was a little hard. Give no, it two no, more seconds. It was, I don't know that it was on. Did it turn on? Yeah. Oh, the numbers were going down. Okay. <laughs> so I, I, in my Let's world. Let's finish the lobster. I promise it seconds. works. Oh, wow. Okay, so anyway, we want to get out all of these seeds. Um, seeds. We're going to flip this <laughs> over. Oil off. Add just a little bit of water to this pan. That will stop <laughs> it from drying out. We're going to cook that for about 45 minutes. And then we're going to make our sauce. So we have a little bit of lemon juice. We have a little bit of um, lemon zest. Chili powder, oh, mix chili. that together, and then everything goes into the pot. And then we have this fantastic dish that is super light, super healthy, and absolutely oh, delicious. I see some sweet peas there, frozen peas. I know, don't you love the frozen peas? What's the verdict, guys? What's the verdict? Don't fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Avocado did soften up. A little, a little hard. Okay, Al, you are not, that is not the truth. I don't I think it softened no, up a little. Al, Al thinks this is Mythbusters. This is yes. delicious. Okay, I asked him. I, I asked him. No, I said it was softened up. Get to the bottom of the avocado dilemma. All right. It was like a baseball. It's fantastic. It's perfect. 18 more minutes. Slash food.
Okay, so we asked self-proclaimed mac and cheese connoisseur and our friend David Rose, he's a chef and author and Food Network TV personality, to dish out his best mac and cheese recipe. He's joining it from his home in Atlanta. David, I mean, who knew <laughs> mac and cheese could get better? Yeah, but David, we're gonna kick it up a notch. Yeah. We like the idea. Yes. Several notches. Okay. Several hey. notches. Okay, what do we need? If we're gonna go shop today for what we're gonna yeah. cook, what do we need? Okay, first off, you need the lobster, you need cheese, you need heavy cream, you need spices. Um, but the lobster is what truly makes this macaroni and cheese exceptional. So very first thing you want to do, what I have here in my cast iron pan, because you're in the South, so you got to have cast iron. <laughs> I have lobster knuckle meat and claws. Feel free to Ooh, use lo uh, uh, lobster tails if you want to as well. Shrimp, chicken, bacon, you make it yours. So right now we have it lowly and slowly poaching in some butter, some garlic, mm. some parsley, a little bit of salt, and mm. white pepper. How long Let does that, that do take? its thing. Yeah. About five to six minutes, and you don't want to rush this process because seafood can cook very quickly, and you don't want to overcook it. So yeah. when it's nice and bright and red, and it still has oh, a little bit of give uh -huh. to it, you know, that's when you know it's ready. So what you do next then, Hoda, mm -hmm. what you do next, next Janet, is you remove that luscious, mm. delicious, mm, plump, yes. red, sweet lobster meat. Oh. Take that out. Oh, but what you want to do, you see that lobster fat, yeah. the butter, all that stuff that's yeah. in there, you want to keep that lobster fat and butter in there. Can what you, you want to do next is... Uh -huh. Can you use frozen lobster? I know, does that sound like something? No, but but yes. could you? Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. Yes, it, this is actually frozen lobster right here. It'll be our secret. Dang. But most seafood <laughs> actually comes to the uh, the market frozen already. You just want to okay. thaw it out and just make sure all the water is removed out of it. But yes, frozen days. seafood yeah. works that way. You can have it in the freezer when you're ready. Take it out. You're good to go. Can okay. you make some Great sauce question. for us? Please. Yes, let's make sauce because you got to have a nice creamy macaroni mm. and cheese sauce in there. So what we have here, lobster fat, butter. Mm. You want to do next is you want to make your roux. A roux mm. is very simple, very easy. It's a fancy French word for equal parts butter or fat and flour. And what you do is you just mm -hmm. add that flour. very slowly mm -hmm. add mm -hmm. the flour to mm -hmm. the lobster fat mm -hmm. and the butter because the first thing you learn in culinary school is fat is flavor. So the lobster <laughs> fat and the butter, it's delicious. It's going to kind of intensify that lobster flavor even more. All right. So once it comes together, it happens very quickly. Okay. It's kind of like a uh, wet sand-like consistency. Yes. Mm -hmm. So okay. if you can see right there, so yeah. that's the roux. That's going to thicken up our cheese sauce. All right. Mm -hmm. So let's get going. The fun what stuff. Cheese, what cheese? Heavy... Oh, there we go. Oh, heavy cream. cream. Okay. Dump what we have here is... In. Here you go. All right. We have pepper jack for a nice mild oh. spiciness. We have parmesan for a nice oh. little nutty sweetness. And we have sharp cheddar for that nice little tang where it hits you right You're back here. So it's language. all about balance. Like all like about it. balance, mm -hmm. ladies. Okay. All right. Okay. So very easy. Don't blink. You might miss the steps. To the roux, you add the heavy cream heavy. because Good we're that. making mac and cheese. So why count calories? Yeah, we tip it. Uh, so tip heavy it. cream. Mm. <laughs> if we're going to do it, we might as well do it. Right, ladies? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. All right, so you add that heavy cream, and then you bring the heat up to a boil. Okay. What you're doing right now is you're allowing that lobster fat, you're allowing that butter and that flour mm. that made our roux to now meld and sort of homogenize with that heavy cream. And as that starts to thicken, we're going to add our cheese sauce. Mm. So while that's doing that thing, we want to impart even more flavor, because any chance I have to add more flavor, I do it, because mm -hmm. why not? Agreed. So into there. We add a little bit of garlic powder, onion powder, cayenne for a little bit of heat, black pepper, and smoked paprika Ooh. for a little bit of smokiness. Look at that. Now, it's good Ooh. to know that this recipe, I actually make it on the grill because the grill has a nice smoky note, and it just adds a nice sweetness and balance what? even more so to that lobster mac and cheese. Wow. Okay. okay. And, and now what? We I gotta... assume we got to add the cheese. We got to do it real quick. Yes, yeah, so we got to add the cheese. Okay. So it starts to thicken up. We add all that lovely cheese mm, in there okay. like that. Oh, we give it a nice little whisk. Yes. All right. Okay, so, okay, and so. once that starts to come together, yeah. get nice and thick and become our cheese sauce, we want to add our pasta. Yes. Oh, I love using cavatappi. It's Italian for corkscrew. And I love the holes and the grooves. That's going to actually seal it and kind of, you know, capture oh, all of that sauce. sauce. And yes. I'm all about that good saucy add, noodle. Nobody wants those, to dry macaroni. Yeah, you're right. No, oh, so no. You just add, add that, that baby in there. Add that oh. baby in there. 
Bops are back in there yeah, like that. I can't. Add a we little can't bit David. more of cheese oh, yes, because sir. why not? And then we fold that bad mamma jamma like they're together. Yes. Mamma jamma. Nice I know your generation. Will you show us? And yeah. Show us. And oh. wait, a little bit we want to add that Parmesan cheese yeah. on top. We don't have enough cheese. We want to add that Parmesan cheese for that nice brulee. I agree. We put that into the grill. We put that into the oven. Oven. We take it out. Bake it. Bada bing. Show us. Bada boom. Did you send us any? Oh. Wait, Bam. That's right there. Can you see that brulee? Can just a, you just a fork. Can you smell it, ladies? Can yeah. Please, please. please. Yeah. Oh. I just want to hug that cheese. Can you pass you me that cheese? Please, David, yes, I, I just want to hug. Here. I want a hug. Cheese. I want a hug. hug. Virtual hug. David, <laughs> David, this was awesome. Here. Oh, look, he's look, feeding look. me. Oh. OK, ready? Hi, Ava. Where's your mouth? My mouth is there. All the taste and none of the calories. David, Thank you, David. David, that, that was amazing. Oh, God, I love him. Lady. By the way, he makes, I mean, it, I it's amazing, it. but there's something about David that adds the special sauce. Uh, exactly. For this recipe, head to todaygot.com slash food. Thank you, David. Thank you, David. He's the best. Alejandro Ramos is here hosting, by the way, congrats Thank on the new you. PBS show called The Great American Recipe. So who better to put a twist on some American classics? And with the 4th of July coming up, if you want to cook with us, by the way, you can scan the QR code for this recipe and to order the ingredients with just a single click. Just select add ingredients to card, schedule that pickup or delivery. Literally could not be easier. Alejandra, what doesn't seem easy to me is a clam bake. You it's know, something I would buy a ticket to go to because <laughs> I couldn't possibly do this at home, but that's not the case. No, it's not the case, and I've got a really fun kind of twist on it for you. So we're making a sheet pan clam bake. Okay. And that just makes it so much simpler. So we're gonna start out by par cooking the potatoes. Basically, you wanna get them cooking first so that they cook at the same time as the seafood. Okay, so you just hold like, potatoes. You don't want raw potatoes with your delicious right. seafood, and you don't wanna dry out the seafood. About seven minutes, boil them. Perfect, ready to go. Mm -hmm. Then you put them on a sheet pan, and then you add all the fun stuff. So this is like, you can help me out here. We've got yep. some andouille sausage. We've got some chorizo, which is my absolute favorite in the world. Just yep. put them on there. Corn, and then of course our clams. Yep. I'm using cherry stones. Get you the herbs in here too? Like herbs. That's, yeah, what is that, uh, parsley, right? cilantro? Some parsley, some thyme, yeah, some, yeah, really um, yeah, you can do tons of garlic. of garlic. I love a lot of garlic and everything I make. Well, this is easy, so yes, it's like a one sheet. easy, yeah, shrimp and uh, mussels too. And you know what, this is the sort of thing, like see what's good, right? You can pick and choose what is your family like. You can have lobster. How much prep do you have to do the shrimp? You just dip? You Literally, you just want, get the easy peel them and, ones. Okay. Just buy them, buy them peeled already. And okay. spread them all out. And then it looks beautiful like this. And then what we do is we make our mixing liquid. Yep. So over here, I've got 
two cups of wine, some delicious melted butter. Mm -hmm. That adds so much flavor. Seafood seasoning. I think I could do this. Yeah, you could do this. Yep. Smoked paprika. You mix this all up. And I love this because you're just getting so many great flavors here and then you just pour that right on the pan. All of it. You don't save any for later. No, just let it rip. no, no, no. Let it all go. We've got our tasters over yeah. there. Yeah. How does it taste, say? guys? It's fantastic, right? Fantastic, right? Love the, uh, and Feels the like sausage. the best. Holiday yeah. weekend. Yeah. Sausage surprise. That's good. Yeah. The sausage is spicy. How's the heat? The heat's good, huh? Okay, good. Here's the thing. Yeah. You cover this with oil, like hot. really tightly wrapped. Yep. Pop it in the oven. For how long? Uh, it depends, about 25, 35 minutes. Just check it. Basically, you want the clams to be the open. The clams to open up. Once the clams are open, you're ready like to feast. Yeah. Looks how gorgeous. Wow, Put that's amazing. Table, serve it with some bread, more melted oh, butter. Okay. Everybody can feast, enjoy like our beautiful, right. amazing. What do you guys? Delicious, right? Yeah, so right. perfect. Simple. It is simple. You so make it look simple. I love what it. else are you making? And all right, so my other thing is, I love things that have a little bit of Latin flair. You know why? I love it. <laughs> so gotta we're doing, we gotta represent. So we're doing a Mexican street corn style pasta salad. So basically, yeah. taking that elote and oh, right, matching it, it with the macaroni seconds. salad. Let's dump it in. You, okay, so you char up your corn, yep. make a sal uh, sauce with some mayonnaise, some chili, some chipotle, all of that. Salt. You mix it all in with the macaroni. Oh, here it is. Yes. That's good. This is a great idea. That's yeah. the important. Part. You're gonna perfect. taste it. That's a great mac Get all I don't those love like macaroni in salad that much either. But a street corn version of it, it I great. like. You know what too? Because I don't like getting the corn in my teeth, oh my so God. I like being able to it's eat really it with good. a spoon. That's yeah. so delicious, right? Nothing else. Steal this idea. Yay! Despite rising food prices across the country, lobster rolls still remains quite popular. NBC News correspondent and host of Stay Tuned over on Snapchat, Savannah Sellers went to Maine to meet the, the real Luke behind Luke's yeah. Lobster. There is a Luke, and we went fishing for lobster together. Oh, it was really fun, actually. actually. Yeah, we did. We nice. did. I think you'll see some of that. We actually caught a lot. I'll tell you about it after, too. But that's right. Luke Holden is a third-generation lobster man who started a career in finance in New York. But then after searching for his go-to comfort food and not finding it here, he realized a new dream. Take a look. I loved the excitement of dropping a trap overboard, letting it sit for a couple of days, and hauling it up and just wondering what was inside. Luke Holden grew up on the main coast, obsessed with lobster. I'm actually a third generation lobsterman, so I grew up on the working waterfront. I love this industry, I love being a part of it. After graduating from college and getting a job in finance, it was that first love that sparked an idea. But you didn't think at first that you necessarily we're going to do this, right? I had a great experience on it. It was just, it was a job. I was sitting at my desk on a summer Sunday afternoon. I was missing home. I went online looking for something that reminded me of home, which was a Maine-style lobster roll. <laughs> and there was nothing. So Luke approached his dad with a business proposal to bring a quintessential Maine lobster shack to the middle of Manhattan. He looked at it, he said, I think you can open a lobster shack in New York City for 35,000 bucks? And I said, yeah, I think I can. Let's try it. And so he actually borrowed against his 401k to come up with, with half the money. Okay, so you've got the money. You're like, I need a partner. So what'd you do? I wrote this post up that I put on Craigslist. It was like, first time I've ever probably gone on Craigslist. 
<laughs> You'd never needed a couch or something before. <laughs> the post was something like, I have no experience, <laughs> limited funding, and like, we just gotta figure this out together. And I got like 700 responses, <gasps> and then I come across Ben's. I met Luke and it, it was immediately clear that like, this is a guy who has one passion his whole life, oh. and that's lobster. The two signed a lease and just 30 days later, opened Luke's Lobster. I left Ben and my father that morning at like 8.30. Because you, by the way, still have a day job. And I'm like, good luck. You know, I'm not really expecting that really we're gonna do any sales. So it's like noon time and absolute crickets. Like two o'clock, either Ben or my father services when they're like, yeah, there's a line around the block. Like Jeff's heading back up to Maine to go get more lobster. Seven months later, Luke quit his day job. I took the $35,000 salary and no health insurance. I was all in. What'd your mom think of that? My mom cried. But her concern was short-lived. Over the next 10 years, Luke and Ben launched 40 lobster shacks across the country and world. All oh. right. Wow, it's kind of interesting you put the shoe on first. And they did something else to expand too. We realized that having the direct connection to the fishermen, we were ultimately gonna to have to control our own destiny by starting our own seafood production plant here mm. in Maine and not having to kind of go out on the open market and buy lobster from whoever happened to be selling. Today, Luke's Lobster <laughs> controls everything from ocean to table. I mean, we've been in charge of that lobster from the moment it was caught. <laughs> All right. But when COVID hit, so did a whole new set of problems. It was like, I was a little kid. I literally called my father and I said, I just need you to come to work today. Ugh. And I was like, just crying. We were over 600 people at the height of 2019. We laid off everybody besides 23 people. Wow. Which is crazy. And then we just, um, <laughs> yeah, I know, it's hard. And then we just like started making plants. Slowly but surely, they've built back. I mean, how do things feel for you right now? There's like light at the end of the tunnel. The sun is starting to shine. It's lobster roll season. Speaking of which. All right. I have to tell you all something, a little bit of a confession. This is actually going to be my first lobster roll. What? Like ever. That blows my mind though. <laughs> this is really good. I know you have two little daughters. Do you think this is going to be a fourth generation lobstering family? I have a three year old who will have a license when she's seven. <laughs> I want them to be very comfortable in the ocean, and, and I suspect they'll love just the excitement of, mm -hmm. of putting that trap into the ocean and pulling up and seeing what's inside. And, and I'm like really excited to teach them about that. <laughs> oh! <laughs> what a lovely what a great guy. guy. I know, I know. he was so great. And now as many companies had to do during COVID, Luke's team pivoted to keep their business going. They started an e-commerce site to sell fish directly to customers, and they launched a line of products at Whole Foods. It's actually two revenue streams that not only kept Luke's lobster afloat, but all the fishermen they support, people like Captain Steve Train, mm -hmm. who was in that piece, showed me how to fish for lobster, yeah. showed me how to band up the claws. Everything was pretty yeah. cool. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Captain. Wait, you actually did the banding? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. That's a little With this scary. tool and everything? Yeah. Oh, it was very scary. Yeah, yes. when you thanks, pull them out. Thanks to Luke's. Yeah. These are Look great. So what are your thoughts on lobster rolls? I liked it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm not big on... <laughs> Craig loves it. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Do you like butter on it? It's butter, mm -hmm. and what's the other one? It's like a mayonnaise. You can type. have it more mayonnaise. This is the perfect mix mm -hmm. of seasonings. It's not too. We've got a piece of mm -hmm. meat. Flip it because. Mm -hmm. Thank <laughs> you, Craig. Drop in lobster. Great. Well done. Mm -hmm. Really good. And we always love it when people bring food into the studio. Now <laughs> you're welcome back anytime. Another time. Time. back to normal. <laughs> Thank you, Savannah. <laughs> Thank you, Luke's. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot how to eat. Really I just bit my cheek. No, no. Oh, that's the worst. You slow down. I was like inhaling it. So excited. Hello and welcome to another fabulous day here on The Boost. We've got a, a fun show for you today. A little bit later, Harry Smith pays a visit to a famed restaurant featured on South Park and now owned by the show's creators. First up, the family who went viral for re-wearing their wedding dresses to dinner. Heard a sat down with them to hear why they decided to put their gowns to good use. Terry, her four daughters, two daughters-in-law, they went viral for a girls' night out on the town, and guess what they did? They just dressed in white. 
More than 5 million people watched that on Instagram. There were captions that read in part, uh, we decided that the most expensive dresses we own deserve to be worn and enjoyed for more than just one day in our lives. And they decided to wear their dresses yet again, right here in Studio 1A. Terry, Madeline, Alexis, Annalise, Kate, <laughs> Hannah Joy, and Sydney. Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. You started the thing. Okay. I mean, uh, Take us back to the beginning of this decision. So you guys always do a monthly uh, dinner. That's the goal. All all the girls yeah. in the family. It's the goal to do it monthly. Which yeah. is cool for you. So then how did this idea to come up come up to like why don't we just wear our wedding dresses? I think Hannah Joy found a reel. Yeah. Yes. And sent it to our daughter's chat. Okay. And everyone was like, yes, <laughs> so we should do it. And someone said, at our next sister date, and that was next week. And we're like, it was okay. Like three days. <laughs> so yeah, okay. We all found our wedding dresses, pulled them out, and <laughs> first tried of all, to get them. <laughs> how awesome that first of all you you still had all your wedding dresses. Most I lost of you, mine, yeah. Terry, yours got <laughs> lost somewhere in the sauce, but you showed up for dinner. Yes. So the reaction must have been super crazy. Tell me what happened in the restaurant, Terry. <laughs> well, I mean, everyone, what, what's going on? Did y'all just get married? Why do you have babies? Where are your husbands? I mean, like the questions were endless. Can we take a picture so with you? Funny. Come on. Yeah, like we had. Yes. Did you guys think? Um, Alexis, that this would start some crazy viral movement because what happened was I can't believe the number of hits you guys got on this. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. I kind of did. I you told did? my husband, he's like <laughs> making dinner, and I'm like, you just watch. This is gonna go viral. Yeah, yeah. He was like, it better because you're not helping me make dinner. I was like, okay. All right, where were, Alexis, when you, uh, you or Madeline, yeah. sorry, Madeline, when you found your wedding dress. Um, what did it feel like putting it back on? Because now many of you have children. You've kind of gone to a different phase in life. It was weird. Definitely <laughs> strange putting it on after eight years married and three children. But I felt really beautiful and happy. <laughs> By the way, you have beautiful babies. There are three of them that are just out in the hall. We think so, too. What did your husbands think overall of this idea that you guys were going to come out here and do this? Yeah, he, I mean, it was fun. Like, well, Gray buttoned me in, <laughs> which you is in. like the opposite of your wedding night, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I'm like, okay. <laughs> you know what I love about your family? First of all, the fact that you did this is amazing and insane, and I think it's going to be duplicated because the point is, is we do wear our wedding dresses one time, and then it goes into a box and locked up. Why are Does we doing sense? that? I don't know. I mean, there, yeah, there's a million reasons we should wear it and celebrate a lot. But what I love about what you do, Terry, is how many children do you have? Eleven. Okay, yeah. I heard gasps and people <laughs> fainted. You have eleven children. I do. Once a week, you have a family dinner. Correct. Tell me about, because your family's close and doing this cool thing, not because it was a one-off. Okay. It's because you guys spend time together. We Tell do me like about together. that. Um, well, we just... We are our support group, mm -hmm. so we come together once a week, and I'm not cooking for them. I mean, sometimes they ha bring things, and sometimes I cook. You know, it just alternates as far as the food goes. But the main point is that we are in community with each it's with each other. I yeah. can't talk, and um, we just want our kids and my grandkids to grow up together. So. This is so inspiring. Will y'all just give me a little description of your mom? Who wants to give a little description? Yes. Ambitious. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. She's a peacemaker. She's a peacemaker? Mm -hmm. Very intentional. She's intentional. Very so fun. I don't know. Well, She's always weird. so fun. She's God. young and beautiful. This is supposed to be about yeah. me. But yeah. you know what? it is fun <laughs> about you. But you guys, what a beautiful thing you did. I think you started a trend. And not only that, you have great timing. You're here on the Nile Horn Day. Right? I mean, yeah. exactly. Do yeah. yeah. y'all want to go out and see the concert? Yes. Yeah. 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 Who are yeah. the girls in their wedding dress? Yeah. Yeah. Nile's going to think you're looking at him. Uh, you guys, thank you. Thank so, you. so much. We appreciate Thank you. you. You're a it's great so mom, Thank uh, you, Terry. Thank I you. want you to write a parenting book, but that'll, <laughs> come, that, that'll come later. Well, now we turn to another viral moment. A young man who's wiser than his years, gaining a following for his very mature morning routine. He joined today along with his parents who are teaching him life lessons that we can all learn from. Six-year-old Ion Jump wakes up before his siblings. You know why? He wants to enjoy his lemon and honey tea. He wants to read his chapter book. His mom just posted a video. It happens all the time. That video went viral, got nearly three million views and counting. Oh my gosh, one comment said he looks like he's got himself a healthy 401k. <laughs> Another asking, can he be my life coach? Well, yes he can, because Ion is here along with his parents, Alyssa and Alpha. 
Hi, good morning. Guys. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Hi, Ion. How are you? I'm good. You are? Now, tell us about your morning routine. Why do you like to take some time to calm down, read, and have your tea? Well, I like to enjoy myself because sometimes when I wake up, and I go to school, I don't have enough time. So that's why I, my mom said that if I finish my morning routine quickly, then I can do a quiet activity. Well, that is so wise, not only of your mommy, but for yes. you to take that advice. I know you have, uh, you got a brother and sister at mm -hmm. home, so it's probably loud once they get up. So you need a little time to yourself. Quiet time. What do you do during your quiet time? What does it feel like? When, when I have my quiet time, I can read a book, drink my tea, or I can play with a toy or any other quiet activity. Okay, okay, talk to them. We're in love you, I, by the way. <laughs> if my kids what's are watching, here. you're grounded um, forever. Okay, I mean, Alyssa yeah. and Alpha, yeah. this extraordinary child. Yes. Thank you. Well. <laughs> Extraordinary parents uh -huh. as well. Thank How did you. you do this? We would like a step-by-step -step guide. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I do not have a step-by-step -step guide. But you know, we started um, with reading to Ion really early, mm -hmm. really from the womb. You know, mm -hmm. we've been reading to him, and we it was a uh, an act something that we did at night. Every night we read to him. Um, and so he's just grown to have a love for reading. You know, he looks forward to getting books as a gift. Mm -hmm. He's asking for different books. We introduce him to um, different types of stories and. As far as the tea, that's really dad. Dad drinks yeah. tea. <laughs> so I grew so. up on, uh, I come from a Caribbean household, so I grew up on tea um, every day. And of course, Ion sees me, you know, drinking my tea in the morning. So one day we just introduced tea. Um, he has his own tea. It's special. It's lemon, honey, and water. Uh -huh. It's not, you know, regular tea. So he has his special tea. Well, what's interesting about this is a lot of our kids do like to read, but we can't get them to be calm yes. like this in the morning. <laughs> I think liking this is his nature, you think though. Are you just a calm kind of kid? Yes. You are? For the most part, yeah. Because I mean, he's still a kid. He's still a kid. <laughs> right. But I remember back when we first met Ion, mm -hmm. and he was talking about affirmations. Yeah. And that was something that caught fire. What were the three affirmations he said? You said I'm smart. I am blessed. I can do anything. You are smart. <laughs> you are blessed. You can do anything. Do, was this something that you just sort of repeated to yes. him? Yes. And then did you actually see it? manifesting yes him? yes i taught it to him when he was two um i just yeah. wanted to oh is that it playing? that's him <laughs> we hear you um yeah. i just wanted him to have something so that he could feel confident and motivated you know as he got older and then the video that you are talking about is when he was three we were walking to school and he yes. just started saying it by himself by himself yeah so i just recorded it and you know i posted it um but he says it i hear him saying it to himself i don't have to prompt him anymore if he's having a difficult time, he'll be like, I can do this. I can do anything. <laughs> By the way, so you wrote a children's working. book, didn't you? Yes. What's it called? Two books. Yes. Um, yes. With my sister. The yes. first book is called I Am Smart. I Am Blessed. I Can Do Anything. Yes. And the second book is I Am Amazing. Wow. I yeah. think you guys are amazing because Thank here's... You. He's obviously an extraordinary child, and we yeah, all yeah. know if your parents, it's like they just, they are who they are, right. you know? <laughs> right. We can only do so much. Exactly. But I love that you... Get, you trusted him enough mm -hmm. to give him that time to do something that is yes. quite mature. Sometimes yes. I think we underestimate mm -hmm. yes. what our kids can do. Mm -hmm. And you so have cool. obviously, obviously set high expectations that Ion has met. Yeah. Ion is just a, you know, he's a very special kid. His name means gift from God, and he's truly oh. just been a gift um, to yeah. us since he's been here. He's just an awesome kid. He's just naturally yes. amazing. Ion, do you ever think about what you want to be when you get bigger, when you grow up? Yes, I want to be a scientist when I grow. And I have my own scientist club at school. You my do? friend Peter's the boss. <laughs> <laughs> really? And why do you want to be a scientist? Because I'm going to make a formula that I can rub on people's heads, and that will make them never die. Until a few months, it will fade away. <laughs> Ion, I oh, believe you. Ion, I you do can too. do anything. I do. We have something special for you, Ion. Oh. Would you like to meet our friend? You might okay. remember her. Our friend Jenna is here. Do you remember, oh, gosh. You remember Jenna? Hi, Ion. It's so good to see you. Hi. He doesn't remember, no, but it doesn't matter. matter. Was three. <laughs> Look what I have for you. Look. I know you love to wow. read. Have you ever read Dog Man? 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The this is for you. Oh, yeah, I love that. And have you ever read Renee Watson? <gasps> Ways to Grow Love? Oh, wow. Something tells me you would love this book. I Do you want to read it? Okay, well, all of these are for you, and this is for your tea. Ooh, you have a special oh, cup. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. All right. Oh, oh, right. Oh, you're amazing. Oh, Bye, Lion. You're amazing. Hi, bye, Lion. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, he's strong, too. <laughs> We've got a fun look at the trivia tide sweeping the nation. You don't want to miss this one. That's right after the break. Welcome back to The Boost. Trivia has overtaken bars all over the country, including right here in New York, as people continue to seek in-person connection and entertainment in the post-pandemic world. Joe Fryer has a little bit more on this latest trend. Ben Affleck and what other actor are both returning as the Cape Crusader in the movie The Flash? If it's Tuesday night, it's trivia night at Lexington Public on Manhattan's Upper East Side. Michael Keaton. Whoa, bye bye. We've been coming here like pretty much every week. Tuesday night trivia brings me to the bar. I really love pop culture. I love geography, uh, like current events, politics, uh, and sports. Teams like this one meet up weekly for some friendly competition. It gets us out on a Tuesday night, so it's nice to have a, a routine. Owner Chloe Patelis added the trivia night as a way to draw customers to the newly opened bar. And she says it's a winning answer. Tuesday night business is up 50 percent. It's brought in so many people that might not have found this location. NYC Trivia League supplies bars like Lexington Public with equipment, hosts, everything they need to run their own trivia nights, besides the beers and wings. The group has seen a rush of interest post-pandemic and added 24 new trivia nights since November. We've seen more players We've seen them coming back more often. And it's not just a New York City phenomenon. The company King Trivia runs events in about 35 states. They've gone from 200 weekly events before the pandemic to more than 300 now. More different types of venues are open to it today. So the popularity has surged. It's way higher. But it's a, it's a much more difficult landscape today than it was before. It's part of a larger trend combining eating and drinking with entertainment. More than 80% of Americans have tried it out. For customers watching their wallets, it provides added value. Well, bars get an influx of patrons and improve their bottom line. Before the pandemic, is a trivia night something that would have you would have even considered? I know a lot of bars did it, but that's not something that I would have considered. It's amazing. I would never go back. And if you're looking to add a dose of competition to your nights out, trivia is not the only option. Some places, customers can throw an axe in between sips of beer or even play pickleball during happy hour. An event night like this, that's their personal trainer, so they have to go. They have to commit to it. Otherwise, they might have just thought, I'm going to go out tonight. Uh, maybe I'll just stay in and watch TV. You're like a personal trainer. Just like a personal trainer, <laughs> yeah. And the trivia craze even took over today. 
Let's throw it back to last year when Hoda, Carson, and I tested our knowledge on the first seven decades of Today Show history. Check it out. We're back with today's trivia special game show celebrating today's 70th anniversary. I'm your host, Al Roker. Now, let's meet our contestants from South Carolina, Craig Melvin, from West Virginia, Hoda Kotb, and from California, Carson Daly. Come on, let's go! Up to you all. Okay, here we go. First question. Which star's father created the Today Show? Was it Johnny Carson? Jimmy Fallon? What? Andy McDowell? Is this real? Wow. I'm going to go with... Sigourney you Weaver. Got a buzz. I did. He did. Right. Sigourney Weaver. You are correct. What? Sigourney oh. Weaver. Her Look at you. Yes. He created not only the Today Show, but the Tonight Show as well. Oh, wow. Right. All right. We're gonna. This is an audio cue. Let's cue the music for this. Play it. Which iconic Hollywood star sang the song that became the original instrumental version of Today? Carson. Judy Garland. Judy Garland. No. I'm going with Doris Day. Correct. Doris oh, Day. Hey, that's right. Hoda Kotb. Hoda's so lucky. That's I right. am pickleball. lucky. Dave I never play pickleball. Then she rules. <laughs> Dave Garraway came up with that. All right. Here's a good one for you. This one's for you, Craig. How many U.S. presidents have been interviewed here on Today? Wow. Craig. 13. You're correct. Right. Every right. president since know? President Eisenhower here That's on good. today. Wow. All right, Wait, let's go now. Wow. Here comes Carson. This one's for you. All right. Our very first plaza performance was A, Billy Joel, Ooh. B, Britney Spears, C, Earth, Wind, and Fire, very D, first? Aerosmith. I'll bite. I'll take the bait. It's got to be Earth, Wind, and Fire. Absolutely correct. Let's go. Oh, and your Wait. favorite oh, band, too. Right. Wait, Shoot. let's watch for a minute. Oh, let's relive. Oh, come on. Broker. Broker, was that one of your favorites? Yes, absolutely. Come on. All right. Here we go. A lot of people have been spontaneously spotted stopping by our window, including oh. a president of the United no. States. Oh. What? Was it A, Harry Truman, B, Gerald Ford, C, Lyndon Johnson, D, Wait, we had Bill to Clinton. Stop by our window uh, in the world. It had to be Clinton. Uh, uh, Craig, Craig. I, I'm going to go with uh, Gerald Ford. No. It's got to be Bill Clinton. No. Uh, it was Harry Truman. Absolutely correct. Wait, Harry what? Truman in 1957 oh, stopped 57. by. I was there that moment. morning. Oh, wait, no. <laughs> wait, can you just look at that photo look for a second, Al? That's amazing that with incredible? his hat on. Oh, that's why I think Hoda and I are tied. So Where's his sign? Up. Where's his right. sign? Okay, here we go. Halloween time. Which celebrity oh, yeah. has not been portrayed by a Today anchor on Halloween? Blake Shelton, Katy Perry. Oh, gosh. Katy Perry. Perry. Absolutely no, correct. I, I got it. That's good. None what? of us yet. <laughs> well, you both buzzed in at the same time. I'll Eddie be has, Cindy has. Okay. okay. We're Wait, coming okay. up on the Olympics, right? Oh, Ready? No. We're okay, flying. Okay, here we go. In 17 days, we'll be... How many Olympics has today traveled to? Okay. He's got, I think Craig? you should compete the, complete no. the question. Okay, how many Let's Olympics... Go ahead, Craig. What do you got? How go many ahead, Olympic Craig. games have we go, traveled? Craig. 15. Absolutely correct. Wow. That's right. Where'd you We've go? We've been at every Wait, Olympics since 1992. Can we, since wow. since, Al, can we pause for a second? Yeah. What's the score? Uh, uh, I believe. Three, two, one. No, wait. Hold I, I, three. I, 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 got, I got Craig, two. No, you got two. Carson, two. All okay. right. All right. Okay. I'm not sure about that. The Today that. Plaza had a big role on a popular sitcom. Name the show. Seinfeld, Will and Grace, wow. Friends. It's got to be 30 Rock. Rock. Nope. <gasps> she said lose a point. Uh, Will ahead. and Grace. Will and Grace is correct. Oh, let's go. go. Oh. Take a look. We've got a little clip. Well, let's see. <laughs> I want to see. Jack was uh, uh, looking forward to finally seeing a gay oh, kiss on network yeah. TV. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right here. <laughs> Another first in today's show. That's right. He brought it here. Uh, it was based on a true story. How many times has Al Rooker been on a primetime network show? Oh, about 100. 14 uh, times. All of them. Okay. okay. Last question. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let's pause. Well, this, this is like a, a tiebreaker. It's like 3 3 3, maybe. Is this 3 3 3, Pete? Might be. Well, let's make it. Okay. Tiebreaker. 3 for Hoda. Is this last question? Carson has three. Craig has two. Oh, okay, okay here we go. Okay, win, here we but, go. But you can tie. Last question. Which is good. How many people have helped the weather job that I am in today? Wow. Craig, I would say only five. Wrong. Hoda. Up, oh, Carson okay. buzzed in. I'm going to say six. Carson is incorrect. So now I have a choice. How me. many people have held the weather? Three. Bang! Yes! Oh, yes! She yes! always yes! wins. Yes! She does. That's right. Bob Ryan, Bob Ryan from WRC, <laughs> so Willard Scott, who had been at well WRC wow, in Washington, and yours truly. There you go. You have know what, Al? Three? How, can Only we just three? pause for a second? How cool for you, too. I know, I know. One of I'm three. So honored. Wow. The other two are just spectacular. Wow. And I got to, got to work with Bob and, for a number of years. And I've known that. So final score, four. What, for what's the prize? Carvoda. The prize is you get to be here for the 100th anniversary. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> You'll be on a smucker's jar. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay. All right. Hey, but listen. By the way, let me just say, yes. I know that Savannah hosted Jeopardy, but how about yeah. Al Roker? Oh, yes. Roker. Yeah. Al, I think Roker. that's your next gig. You did no, such no. a good job. I'm Streaming decide. is going to be calling you this afternoon. Wow, this will be a up. show. And oh, you know, we did a game now. show on MSNBC when it first started called Remember This. It was a news game show. Oh, my and, God. Well, you're pitching right you're now. You're about you to bring it back. Let's bring it back, baby. After the break, some heartfelt Harry Smith stories that you don't want to miss. Stay with us. back here on The Boost with one of our favorites, Harry Smith. Harry recently traveled to a famed restaurant from the long-running series South Park that's sure to give patrons a taste of the cult comedy in real life. Take a look. It's big and it's pink. And for decades, Casa Bonita was Colorado's go-to pleasure palace for kids. Usually when we came here, it was a birthday. I felt exotic when I came here. It felt like I had gone away. And since those housing and days, Casa Bonita has occupied an extraordinary amount of space. Wow, Casa Bonita! Woo-hoo! In the What's psyches that? of South Park creators and Colorado natives, Matt Stone and Trey Parker. Ever since we started, the building, we have named our office Casa Bonita. It's like fate. Fate would mean Casa Bonita's closing down and bankruptcy. They had to buy it. And I said, yes. And he goes, I know, but don't get to I mean, We don't know yet. I'm like, yes. And I was just like, we're doing that, yes. To be kind, Casa Bonita had seen better days. It was a wreck. The idea of these two guys buying it was funny, a kind of extravagant gag, or so we thought. So this is without irony, then? It's not a joke. And that's the thing is it, it, it had become a joke. And we were sad that it had become a joke because you could see what this place was in the 70s when they built it. You know, they were trying to make a little Disneyland here. We're here, Casa Bonita. Oh, man, this is going to be so great. 20 years ago, Parker and Stone immortalized their love for Casa Bonita in a South Park episode. I feel like Cartman a lot here, you know, just going in there, and we could do this, and we could do that, you know, we could do that. It really is. Watching, watching Trey walk around and get, have, and, and, well, the, roll, the emotional roller coaster of doing this, you know, he's, yeah. he's feeling it as much as, as Cartman would. You know? <laughs> this is almost like restoring an important national I, landmark. Yes. It's not almost. That, yeah, it, it was. Is. Oh, it is. Yes, it is. And yeah. restoration is a, be, is a better word than renovation, because right. it would cost way less to just rebuild this. Right. Or make a better version of it down the road. It makes me it, wonder what that number is. It's close to infinity yeah <laughs> it approaches infinity we toured the giant restaurant slash joy factory to see what infinity dollars can create a lot of cool stuff like any construction project there was a punch list this one a bit bigger than most you can see there's some stuff being checked off and there's some stuff not checked off and yeah 
It's only a hundred. Don't worry about that. We're good. We're good. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. The cliff divers were showing off the day we were there. Yes, there are cliff divers. The old 70s look of swimwear back, they made these custom for us. We always believed cliff divers performed to distract us from how bad the food was. To the rescue, a new chef, James Beard nominee, Dana Rodriguez. People mentality is like, we still have the same menu, but now it's true food. Rodriguez possesses a kind of personal superpower reflected in her sopapillas. See? Perfecto. Parker and Stone figure they'll need about six million customers a night to break even. So be reassured, they are not leaving their day jobs. So of my uh, favorite recent episodes was the one about the Canadian royalty. The prince and his wife. <laughs> we want privacy. We want privacy. Yes. Right. Canadian royalty, yes. Canadian royalty. Just because I'm Canadian royalty. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and that just broke through. I mean, every English person I know was ca calling me. Like, every single one. You know what I mean? <laughs> and what were they saying to you? I mean, thank honestly, you. they were thank you. They were saying thank you. As much as people think that South Park, we get in a room and go, okay, who can we make angry and who can we piss off? It's not. It's how can we make people laugh? Can you do this forever? You'll find interviews of me <laughs> at, at age 30 saying, well, it's not like I'll be doing South Park when I'm 40 years old. You know, so it's like, it really is like we get back in there and we get just kind of back to our roots. It's actually, I think, honestly, healthy for us now. Stick around. We've got another story that's sure to boost your day after the break. Welcome back to The Boost. We've got one last uplifting story we just had to share with you guys. Check it out. A high school senior named Jamar got a graduation gift that he will never forget. An unexpected guest showed up to watch him get his diploma. Turn to your left. Turn to your left. Turn to your left. That is Jamar's dad. He flew in all the way from Kuwait, where he's stationed, to surprise his son on his big day. And you can see there, Jamar obviously couldn't be happier to see him. Thanks so much for joining us for another day full of feel-good energy. Can't wait to bring you more uplifting stories tomorrow, right here on Today All Day.
Hello and welcome to our Today All Day Pride special, Pride is Universal, Better Together. I'm Joe Fryer. In the next half hour, we're going to highlight stories affecting the LGBTQ community, stories of hope, healing, and inspiring individuals making this world a more inclusive place. We begin in Memphis with the story of Kayla Gore. While homelessness is a national issue, finding safe shelter can be difficult, especially for transgender individuals. Kayla's organization is hoping to change that by building houses and putting more than a roof over the heads of those in need. Take a look. It's a city known for its barbecue and blues, but just minutes from the hustle and bustle of Beale Street, Memphis, Tennessee is also home to a vibrant yet vulnerable transgender community that faces social and economic challenges. We're in the Bible Belt of the South, and it's a, it's a red state in terms of housing access and discrimination, employment access and discrimination. There's no real legal protections for trans people. Nationally, one in five trans individuals is said to have experienced homelessness at some point in their life, and nearly a third live in poverty. Those figures are even higher when you account for race. I was born and raised here in Memphis, Tennessee. When Kayla Gore was just 23 and newly transitioning, she experienced homelessness while living 1,500 miles from the city where she grew up. It was very, very scary. After returning to Memphis, she entered a transitional housing program and began working without Memphis, the local LGBTQ community center. During that time, Kayla says she started to see a lot of trans and queer people kicked out of their homes at the age of 18, some rejected by their families. While there are services for individuals experiencing home insecurity in Memphis, many are faith-based. There's lots of anti-LGBTQ rhetoric, and more importantly, a lot of those shelters are separated by sex assigned at birth. You're forced into a situation of either outing yourself or staying closeted in an environment where you could be incredibly unsafe. There's also a lot of trans folks of color here, so then you also kind of double down with racism. They have a lot stacked up against them. The pandemic exacerbated that. A survey by the Trevor Project found last year more than 80% of trans and non-binary youth said COVID-19 led to a more stressful living situation. Hoping to change that, Kayla, who'd been able to purchase her own home, which she shared with others who found themselves experiencing homelessness, founded My Sister's House. We wanted to provide like a space where people can thrive and they can actually start to grow um, and heal the trauma that they had you know, experienced in their youth. Originally a word of mouth program, my sister's house aimed to provide emergency services and shelter to trans and queer people of color. It's for us by us, like it's trans people at the helm of it and it's from a perspective of someone who's been there. I was homeless as a youth, so I, I remember what it was like being vulnerable. As my sister's house evolved, so did their mission. Now the group is aiming to build 20 homes for trans women in Memphis. It's safe to say that I did not come from a background of building houses or working with plumbing and electrical, uh, but it is safe to say that I came from a family that had really love and compassion for the community that they live in. Originally planning to build tiny homes, they're now renovating existing homes because of the rising costs of everything, including lumber. Using a lottery of individuals they previously helped, recipients get more than a shelter, they actually own the house. It's a different feeling when you um, have your own place. Jeanette Adams moved into her home just a few months ago. It's a tiny house, but it, you know, it's big to me. Jeanette had been living with her mom and has a supportive family, but being able to live on her own has boosted her confidence. I felt free. A lot of people, especially trans women, we don't get a chance to own anything. Kayla says that's exactly what she's hoping to provide those selected to receive a house. Trans people are boxed out of economics in so many different ways that we have to build our own economics. This is how people built generational wealth 100 years ago where their families had small homes. So it's nothing new that we're doing. It's just that we're doing a unique thing for a community that really deserves it. Just a couple miles from Jeanette's home, crews are replacing the electrical system at another property. This will be our fifth house that will be occupied. Modi James will soon call this two-bedroom home her own sanctuary. I'm ecstatic about it because it would be mine. It's my, it would be my home, not my house. Modi says she does not feel safe in her current living arrangements. I've been trying to get a home on my own. They take you through the ringer and they expensive. I see nothing and I live nothing but poverty. I'm trying to overcome it. 
LGBTQ advocates in Memphis say my sister's house is giving people more than a place to live. It also created visibility and hope and inspiration for the trans community and for trans people of color here in the South that just wasn't there before. If I had the opportunity to receive the resources that we provide today, I couldn't imagine what my life would be like. Kayla hopes to expand and replicate what my sister's house has done in other cities. She also hopes the program has something of an expiration date. I would want the legacy of my sister's house to be that we came, we conquered, and we disappeared because we no longer were needed. My sister's house operates mostly through donations and grants. A GoFundMe for the group has generated more than $300,000. Kayla says they have a goal to build and renovate 20 homes by the end of next year. Coming up, Craig chats with the sole openly gay professional baseball player in the league. Plus, this cattle ranch has become a social media sensation for its grass-fed beef and the queer farmers behind the brand. Stay with us. Baseball, America's favorite pastime. We might sing Take Me Out to the Ball Game, but it's a profession that only has one out player, Brian Ruby. Craig recently caught up with Brian to hear about his experiences as a gay professional baseball player and how his dad's support has made all the difference. Take a look. Meet Brian Ruby, the only openly gay professional baseball player in the United States. Brian first came out publicly last season while playing independent baseball for the Salem Kaiser Volcanoes in Oregon. I decided that I'd come out to my teammates last season by lacing up with rainbow shoelaces during Pride Month. I considered it more like inviting in than coming out. Yep, this is who I am. You threw me one curveball. Brian's dad, John, whose last name the family would like to keep private, was Brian's high school baseball coach, and as to be expected, has always been his son's biggest fan. When did you know that Brian was going to be a baseball player? Something clicked around six or seven, and he got passionate about baseball, and we were always on the baseball field. John had some success of his own on the diamond, playing Division I ball as a pitcher at the University of Pennsylvania and then overseas in Australia. That experience led him to have some initial fears about his son's baseball career when Brian shared his plans to go public about his sexuality. In your heart of hearts, did you think it would change his opportunities? I was worried about how he would be perceived in that world. There were a million things running through my mind but what I wanted him to know in that moment was, I'm good, and you're good. And he wasn't just good, he was great. After tying up his rainbow laces and coming out to his teammates in the public overall, Brian's batting average skyrocketed a full 90 points. So what was it like last season? Well, I don't know if I'm gonna get applauded when I run onto the field or if 
I'm gonna be in the batter's box and get hit by a 93 mile an hour fastball in the head. The real thing that happened was I got a hit, you know, my first at bat and got on base and the pitcher tipped his cap and I just gave him a little tip back and that peer-to-peer on-field recognition was by far the most meaningful thing in the game of baseball. And Brian's not only talking openly about his own story, he's also co-founder of Proud to Be in Baseball, an organization that supports and advocates for ball players of all ages who are looking for gay mentors in the sport. Brian's work with Proud to Be in Baseball has taken him around the country to attend Pride events at a number of MLB ballparks. In September of 2021, he was invited to sing the national anthem at Dodger Stadium. In addition to being a, a, quite, the, quite the baseball player, you're a, you're a budding country music star. I always loved country music, and uh, I've been writing songs. I always have my guitar on the road during baseball, playing on the team bus. I mean, which do you enjoy more, baseball or, or country music? <laughs> I gotta be careful because the baseball coaches. I don't know, you're good, you're good. It sounds like it's neck and neck. Look, you can only be a baseball player for so long. It's true. I would imagine, Dad, you have to be quite proud. What I'm most proud about with Brian in general is he just goes for it. I mean, what do you want to see from your kids? You want to see them thrive. Yeah, I mean, you know that's a testament to good parenting, too. Uh, I mean, that's what I hear. When we come back, the spotlight is on LGBTQ youth and the generational shift of coming out in this digital world. Stay with us. Welcome back. Now we focus on the future and the advances the next generation is making when it comes to coming out. I sat down with five students at the University of Central Florida to hear about their experiences with coming out. Take a look. They're called Gen Z, but many young adults proudly embrace five other letters, LGBTQ. I'm a lesbian. I'm gay. I'm bisexual. I'm transgender. I'm queer. A recent Gallup poll found that among Gen Z adults, those between the ages of 18 and 25, about 21% identify as LGBTQ. 21%, that's one in five. When you heard that number, what was your reaction? I really wasn't surprised. Our generation isn't really scared to actually say that we're part of the community and we're actually proud of who we are. 
With the help of Campus Pride, a national group supporting LGBTQ college students, we gathered this group of Gen Zers, Eddie, Nick, Marcus, Sierra, and Mary. They go to the University of Central Florida and are part of the first generation to totally grow up in a digital world. Social media, how important was that to you when you were younger? Oh, social media, it was like everything to me because it really helped me form a sense of myself. I remember writing in my diary as a kid that I had a crush on a boy just over and over and over just to pray that eventually I'll convince myself that I do. And I got introduced to these online communities and I finally saw, oh wait, I'm not a freak. There are people out there who feel the same way that I do. And that realization saved my life. And I don't want to add more stress to your day, but I love you. They could also see themselves reflected in traditional media, movies, and TV shows. Growing up and seeing even the smallest bits of representation in like LGBTQ plus characters and everything of that sort is just made me feel, you know, like not alone. And it made me feel like kind of understood. And perhaps no endorsement had a greater impact than the one delivered by the Supreme Court in 2015. Now to that historic Supreme Court decision legalizing same-sex marriage across the land. All of it creates a sense of belonging that mental health experts say is vital. The messaging that Gen Zers have is like, it's okay to be who you are and to love who you love and to talk about that and celebrate that. A majority of LGBTQ Gen Zers say they're bisexual. And among those five letters, the growing number of young people identify as queer, which is perhaps most simply defined is not straight. I present as a boy, but I love pink or I love like feminine things, but at the same time, I could also like masculine things and I don't need to be in that set, like binary. For your generation, it's easier to come out than say my generation, but it's not easy, is it? No, no definitely not. Mm -hmm. For me, coming out was always sort of like bouncing off a brick wall and bouncing off the brick wall and bouncing and bouncing until eventually I can make a dent. I feel like there's this huge disconnect. Oh, being queer is like a trend, but these are people's identities. These are people really putting themselves on the line and putting themselves in a place where they could be in danger. All of them grew up in more conservative communities in Florida. It's a state that's making headlines this year for passing legislation that prohibits classroom instruction on sexual orientation and gender identity for many younger students. We're gonna make sure that parents are able to send their kid to kindergarten without having some of this stuff injected into their school curriculum. What critics call the don't say gay law. Now you're just trying to control and minimize us and just kind of shove us back even more, but I think it only just kind of makes us push back harder. So when you look at the future, do you have optimism? Yes, definitely. We have always been here and now we are saying we're here. We are letting the world know that we accept ourselves, we love ourselves, and we're not going to back down. One major reason it's easier for younger people to come out, society is more accepting. 70% of Americans now approve of same-sex marriage. And here's a really important stat about acceptance. LGBTQ youth who have at least one accepting adult in their lives were 40% less likely to report a suicide attempt. According to Harvard's Life in Rural America surveys, less than 5% of the rural population identifies as LGBTQ. But Bastrop Cattle Company is working to change that. The grass-fed beef brand has taken TikTok by storm, amassing millions of views and likes about their grass-fed beef while influencing a new generation of farmers within the ranching community. Take a look. The first video that I made ended up going viral for about 9 million views on TikTok, and it's just me yelling at cows. Normally me being sassy with them because some of them are just real troublemakers. Come on, girls! I did not expect that people would be so interested in uh, just a gay man yelling at cows. That gay man is Max Kremke. He, along with husband Brandon Raisler and Patty Jacobs, own Bastrop Cattle Company. This trio is changing outdated stereotypes of cattle ranchers. Their farmhouse is even pink. I think that rural Texas gets painted with a broad brush, that it's going to be uh, intolerant or, or traditional. I get the sense uh, from a lot of people in certain areas that they don't see that many uh, uh, gay ranchers around. 
And it is, uh, it is really interesting because uh, everybody's been very warm and accepting. There are some decent numbers of women that are going back into farming and ranching. And there's always been kind of a history of women ranching in Texas. Y'all be nice. The ranch has been in the family since 1970, and I grew up here. Patty left the ranch for two decades after college, but then decided to come back home, taking over the family ranch in 2006. Patty and brother Cleve transitioned it to an entirely grass-fed operation. <laughs> The calves are born here, so the majority of the animals have always been here their entire lives. They're really bred to live on this ranch and get the most out of the grass that we have here. As Patty and Cleve were growing their herd, Cleve died of lung cancer in 2013. Patty needed more hands to run the farm. I ran for office and met uh, Max's husband, Brandon. And pretty soon, Brandon was helping me with the business, even though we lost the campaign. And we just kind of grew it from there. And then Max came into it about three years ago. City boy, uh, never ever thought that I would be living out in rural Texas. Hey, Elijah. Hey, big boy. Hey, big boy. I met my husband about 11 years ago, and he was from a small town, and I'm from Austin. We immediately fell in love. We knew that we were the right one for each other. And it was uh, so interesting because he's always been really passionate about cattle ranching. <laughs> Bastrop's cattle are raised without hormones or antibiotics on chemical-free pastures. The trio selectively breed the animals to thrive in central Texas, from enduring drastic weather changes to scavenging for local plants. And we call our cows hustlers. Um, because we expect them to hustle. They eat the grass, but they also eat the oak leaves, they eat uh, cactus. The labor-intensive process yields beef that is well-marbled and tender despite the cow's grass-only diet. For nearly a decade, Bastrop sold most of its premium meat to restaurants. The demand shifted radically during the pandemic. We had to pivot within a two-week period to 100% direct, and then we were backed up six months. We didn't know if we could ship beef. I was delivering all of the beef myself. Now we're in a completely different area. We're boxing it and we're shipping it and we could get it anywhere in Texas in two days. Max's background in film production and marketing helped support their new venture. He built a new website and launched a social campaign targeted at a new demographic. A lot of places that we saw do uh, kind of like what I'd consider to be like man meat. We actually kind of chose to go a different way on ours by being more inclusive in terms of our brand language and how we try to appeal. We try to direct it more towards the woman in the household because they're the ones who are going to be making the decision about what goes in that freezer. Customers really love knowing where their beef comes from and so they keep on coming back and we're happy to have them. But it's not only sales that have grown for Bastrop. Their ranch is famous on TikTok. Max's TikTok account is more than 4 million likes. He's hoping to inspire a new generation of more diverse farmers by sharing his love for agriculture. You my sweet, sweet boy. You let me rub around on your horns. You let me go under the chin. Whenever somebody's like, oh, uh, you really inspire me as a gay man doing this, which I'm not trying to do that. I, like, I'm not setting out to be like, I'm an icon and a hero for being a rancher. What I think is really important is just trying to normalize that idea that normalize the fact that it's not just one type of person that's yeah. involved. It's everybody is invited. All of the women, the gays, everybody else getting involved in agriculture is actually providing a lot of new energy and new innovation. Unlike Max, Brandon prefers to stay out of the spotlight and focus on caring for the herd. The trio built a business that feels more like a family. We kind of yeah. take care of each other and believe in the same sort of the same sort of ethics and moral. Patty hopes that Max and Brandon will eventually take over the business as the two share Patty's vision of farming her family's land for years to come. There's something special about this. It's not just that I'm a woman and he's gay. We want something that we can feel comfortable with, that we can steward on through and continue doing it, where it's a, a brand that you've heard about for a really long time and you know that you can depend on it. Our Pride special continues after the break.
Welcome back. From lipstick to eyeshadow, beauty products allow users to feel like better versions of themselves. And now the world of beauty is more expansive with the rise of gender inclusive beauty brands. Take a look. For years, the beauty industry has marketed products towards an exclusive audience. So, how come you're putting lipstick on? The girls always got to look. But now, gender-inclusive beauty brands are redefining beauty standards beyond the binary. When we speak about gender inclusivity um, and gender expansive identities, what we really mean by that is that anybody can express any aspect of their self as they'd like regarding gender. Laura Kraber was inspired by her experience as a parent to create We Are Fluid in 2018. I've just been so inspired by the young people who are leading a societal shift and creating a more expansive expansive understanding of gender identity. I just felt like now was the time to create a brand that was welcoming to people of all skin tones, all gender expressions, all gender identities. Laura was on to something. 69% of Gen Z and millennials are looking for more brands that offer gender-inclusive products, according to a report from Ypulse, a youth marketing research company. Now many are turning frustration into fuel to start their own beauty brands. I was inspired to create Dragon Beauty after being a little frustrated that the beauty industry wasn't reflecting someone like myself as a trans woman in the marketplace. I feel like beauty really needs to match the world. The world is colorful and people come in an array of a spectrum and in different sizes, shapes, ethnicities, you name it. Patrick Starr created One Size to encourage kindness and expression. It's important for me to share the voices of the unseen and the unheard in my community because once upon a time, I was one of those customers. I was scared to buy makeup. I felt like I was going to be judged. I felt like no one was going to accept me. The One Size brand mission is to represent everyone through beauty. Makeup is a one size fits all. To keep up with high demand, these brands are shifting their focus to incorporate inclusivity and representation from products to marketing and beyond. We really need to champion those that are unconventional and different. I think we're all tired of seeing the same type of model again and again. I think we're living through a moment where that is really changing. and. I think in 10 years we'll see even more change. For me, it's so important to have trans models, to have models of color, to have a workspace that reflects room that I want to be in. For these founders, personal experience led to products that are changing the world of beauty for the better. I was wanting to look in the mirror and see the woman that I felt inside. These beauty products really helped me find who I was and have always been my protective armor in facing the world. I wasn't born like this. I didn't get to wake up like this. But if I can put on a little bit of sequins and lashes and lipstick, I can really feel confident in being who I really want to be. And that's for everybody too. Through their efforts, gender inclusive brands are redefining what beauty should be and reminding the world how beauty should make you feel. Thank you for joining me this half hour to celebrate Pride is Universal. I'm Joe Fryer. We'll see you next time on Today All Day. One thing Maine is known for, it's the lobster. Yeah. And today you are in for a treat. We're taking, we're talking lobster tater tots. Ooh, we got a special delivery from my favorite restaurant. The founders of Cousins Maine Lobsters, Savin Lomac and Jim Salikas are here, everybody. Woo. Hi, guys. Let me let you know something. You will never untaste this. No, I know. It's I'm gonna excited. It's going to in your mouth for a long time. Oh, you've had our food before? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, I've I'm, seen him at a restaurant too many times. Exactly. He's a stalker. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, listen. I love this combination. Tater tots and lobster. So what do we start with? It's so tater good. Tots are tater so healthy, tots. You know? like, yes. We're going to start with a cilantro lime sauce. Today, okay. And you guys are doing everything. So we yes. have Let's do lime it. juice, chipotle, cilantro. Okay. And we just and throw it all in there. You throw it all in there. Let's see how we can work together. You guys do nice work, such guys. Such a team. Yeah, I, yeah. I like what's like going us. on over yeah, there. Yeah, you, 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 nice work. And then we put that on. And, and you pulse it. So if you want to make it a little milder, because I know sometimes the chipotle yeah. bays will scare people. Take, we'll take the seeds out of, obviously, the jalapenos. Oh, and, you know, to bring it down of the heat. Yogurt and sour cream. Yogurt, sour cream, and mayo. So we'd mix wow. these two into here. Okay. 
Unless you want to do it. Yes. Yeah, let's get it. Come on, let's get some action over here. Let's see some movement, guys. Nice work, nice work. Jenna, you want to uh, put it all together? Oh, oh wow. Yes, that's right. good. That's this, perfect. This, you're, and this is you're the sauce charge. for the top. This is the, yep, yep, I have some in my finger. Mm. This is so good. Okay. So that's our cilantro lime sauce that we're going to use. And when that is done, yes. come on, bring it on down. We're going to the down. pico de gallo. Okay. Which is just adding the white onion, cilantro, and jalapeno into one. I like that they have bowl. kind of a Texas vibe with your Same. lobster. Yeah. yeah. We had to have a little spice, so obviously. Well, Y'all yeah. go with a little sauce. Oh, hey, 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 you hey, you're your show. You know? Your recipe. <laughs> We're just here. Give me some more sauce. A little bit of lime juice. Give me a little more sauce. A little more sauce. Okay, yeah, well, he's wow. from Louisiana. We like the sauce. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to go down here. <laughs> <laughs> and that's so our pico de gallo with a little bit of lime juice, and then it Beautiful. is. It's, it's time for Maine. Our man, time for Maine to shine. And we've been ready for Maine to show up. We've been Maine. So. Here we are with a little bit of uh, lemon butter in the skillet. Lemon butter. And oh, Ooh. by the way, lemon butter, that's bougie. That's that is bougie. Wait, okay, I have a question. Lobster's kind of expensive. Is there ways, like, can you buy, would you ever buy it frozen or no? We, we, we buy everything from Maine. Okay. Um, you know, and, and here's the thing. If you can if you can get lobster, get it wherever you want. You yeah. know, we, we always say buy Maine lobster. Yes. But, you know, just indulge yourself yes. and treat yourself. We call it an affordable luxury. And it's like a once a year, you know, a fancy date night once dish. Yeah. Well, I know. I'm <laughs> unless, you're, unless you're our mother. He spends time in San Tropez. <laughs> it sounds like Justin, and when he wakes up at 1.30 in the morning, yeah. that's when he's having, or in the oh, afternoon, yeah. that's when he's having lobster. 100% with some yeah. caviar <laughs> and champagne. His you life. You guys are like shrimp. shrimp. Yeah. It's, like you qu it's like a quick cook. Like quick shrimp. cook. You're just putting, a, you're Very taking quick. the chill off of it. So we're done with that. So what you would do here is the finished product, which is the tater tots. And then we go with the lobster meat. We throw that on top. Okay. Yeah. Mess Some away. Be generous. Be generous. Be generous. Be generous. Be generous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put the whole thing on there. Okay. And then pico and cilantro lime sauce. So Ooh. it's like a real throw the pico on. On our food trucks and our restaurants, mm. this is one of the most popular shareable items because yes. it's you know kind of you can get a lobster roll, you can get some chips. You yeah. share. I'm no. not sharing yeah, this yeah, with anybody. Are you gonna share this with anyone? Not including her today. Okay. He likes oh. to eat it himself. Oh. Wait, yes. now y'all, where are your food trucks? Are they everywhere? Yeah, we're in 26 states throughout the country. Wow. We have 40 trucks that we've franchised throughout the nation and 10 restaurants as well. So oh my gosh. if you guys aren't doing anything later, yeah. you want to open a truck or a restaurant, let us know. <laughs> Actually, maybe we should go into business should together. We should it? we open hey. a truck? Yes. Yes. Do we just become best friends? Yes. Yes. Let's go. Thank you. Okay. All right. Enough of Jimmy. You okay. guys need to try it. Okay, come on, try Thank it. You. I'm going to try it, and then we're going to make something I'm really excited about. This is a little Texas, you, a little Maine. You, you, you guys eat. I'll explain. Mm -hmm. We're making lobster quesadillas, so we wanted to. Mm -hmm. we, our first food truck was in California. California and Los Angeles, so we wanted to have a little bit mm -hmm. of a flair, not just lobster rolls. Mm -hmm. And these are really easy to make at home. So mm -hmm. you're going to put your tortilla right down on the skillet mm -hmm. in a hot pan, maybe some spray or a little butter. In this instance, we didn't do anything. Yeah. It kind of looks like a pizza coming to life right oh, now. I love pizza. Yeah, it does. Uh, <laughs> all right, so you want to throw some cheese onto this guy? Sure, sure. All right, you want to throw some lobster onto this? Uh, yes. so I had a feeling. All right, so let's put lobster. Just, just get crazy with yeah. it. Yeah. And do you put it on one side, or we, do you? You know, it's it's your world. Okay. We've perfect. learned that you guys are just doing your own thing. Well, that's today. true. And, and so, evidently, you pay our light bills in uh, yeah. West Hollywood yeah. for the restaurants. So oh, one hundred percent. All right. And by the way, we never get lobster like this. Can you hand me that lobster over there too? Oh yeah, you're oh, not gonna. Yeah. He's, believe me, you think my man's yeah. gonna, wow. gonna fold put it, it over? Fold you went over. Guys, you got to fold. Fold it over. Fold. It's more that's like a, little, a calzone. That's what I was like going to say. But, it's you know, huge. Yeah, yeah. Do you uh, have to flip this thing? or You have to flip it. And you kind of just. It, I'm going to open it so my man can eat well, it without the carbs. You know, well, he doesn't put like 16 His body is a temple. <laughs> this, is not not, today. this is not a true representation of how much lobster meat is in the case. Dude, <laughs> this is just insanity. In there. All right, it's a nice flip. Ooh, okay, okay, afterwards, okay. same sauce we're going to drizzle over, which Jim yeah. left on the other side of the table. Oh, my bad. Some people to guy. Thank you. Thank you. Is it so delicious? Oh, my gosh. you got to try this. Jenna's already eating. She doesn't mm -hmm. even care about the rest of the mm -hmm. recipe. By the way, who am I kidding? This is not mine. This is mine. Oh, <laughs> wow. That would have been amazing. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Mm. And to get these recipes, head today.com slash food. Two recipes that will help cut out the fat, but these are recipes that are still delicious, right? Yes, absolutely. So in my house, we are strict adherence to Taco Tuesday. And, and, done, and isn't that a good day? Taco Tuesday. It's oh, like right. you wake up, the kids wake up in the morning, it's like, it's Taco Tuesday. Yes, and then the whole 
all day is good. Everybody's Everything's happy. Yeah. Everybody's happy. So, this is actually, we make a tater tot taco casserole. Mm. That sounds it delicious. It is divine, we're, but we can't be doing that every day. Oh, so, okay. so what we excited, did, though. we're doing a quinoa sweet potato taco. Okay. Oh, wow. It's absolutely wonderful. We're going to roast these vegetables. We, of course, want to put a little olive oil. Mm -hmm. We're going to do a little bit of salt and then toss that around. That'll go into an oven 350 degrees, you know, just until they're super. Now, with your sweet potatoes, not to cut you off, you, now, how do you cut them? What's your, what's your secret? Oh, okay. I, I well, so that. first we're going to peel them. And yes, they are. They're not the easiest thing. But what you always want to remember is that you're going to need to give it a flat side. If you've got something that rolls and yeah. you've got fingers that can get involved in a really sharp knife. Oh, yep. Honey, I'm, I'm sorry. That's the tater tots right there. Yeah. Okay. That's um, always a flat side. So then side. a flat side. No. So now we would go <laughs> here. Do you go. see how much easier that is? Mm -hmm. right. And now we have our nice oh. little oh. pieces. Exactly. So flat side if it rolls. Onions, all that. So we are going to saute some vegetables. We have red onions and peppers. Mm -hmm. That's going into a nice hot pan. We want to cook that down until it gets super wilted, get that flavor going. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things, taco seasoning has more sodium in it. I mean, if I eat it the next day, I cannot get my rings off. Wow. My face is okay. so bloated. So I can't even open my eyes. So you make your own. So I make my own. So we have, um, and we're going to do it in this sour cream. You okay. could always do Greek yogurt if you wanted to. Um, we have a little bit of salt. Cumin and chili powder, oh, cilantro, cilantro. and a little lime juice. Oh, lime? Yeah. Oh. And now we're going to mix that up. So now we're going to get away from all that sodium mm -hmm. chemical laden yeah. taco season packet and oh, yeah. um, roll right over That's here. Good. What's the verdict, guys? That's That's delicious. Delicious. You got my microwave there. Oh, oh gosh, thank you, honey. That's my best tip. Yeah. Um, so if you have an avocado that is hard as a rock, yes. you yes. can stick it in the microwave for 10 seconds, no longer. 10 seconds. It'll ripen and it, it up. will be soft. Stop wow. it. Stop it. I'm not kidding you. This was worth a whole softball. I mean, I'm serious. This Here. is 10 Great. seconds in the microwave. This is like guacamole every day. Just I know. Well, you know, that is. going to be trouble go. for us. Hold on. All right. This how do we do it? Well, you really know what? Let's, let's get okay, to the lobster pasta. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like you work that. on that, Roker. So what do we have here? One of my most favorite things in the world is a lobster macaroni and cheese. I'm obsessed. But again, we can't do that every day. So we're going to switch out. We're going to do a spaghetti squash lobster. Lobster pasta. Oh, Isn't though. it wonderful? Yeah. With a lot of spring vegetables. I mean, we are really, you know, we're you know getting there. And Give it 10 you. More seconds. What? Oh, it was a little hard. Give no, it 10 no, more seconds. It was, I don't know that it was on. Did it turn on? Yeah. Oh, the numbers were going down. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, in my Let's world. Let's finish the lobster I promise it seconds. works. Oh, wow. Okay, so anyway, we want to get out all of these seeds. Um, seeds. We're going to flip this <laughs> over. Foil off. Add just a little bit of water to this pan. That will stop it from drying out. We're going to cook that for about 45 minutes. And then we're going to make our sauce. So we have a little bit of lemon juice. We have a little bit of um, lemon zest, chili powder. Oh, mix chilly. that together. And then everything goes into the pot. And then we have this fantastic dish that is super light, super healthy, and Absolutely delicious. I see some sweet peas there, frozen peas. I know, peas. don't you love 18. the frozen What's peas? What's the verdict, guys? What's the verdict? Don't Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Avocado did soften up. up. It's still I, a, little, a little hard. Okay, Al, you are not, that is not the truth. I don't I know. think it's softened no, up Al, a little. Al, Al thinks this is Mythbusters. This is yes. delicious. Okay, I asked I him, I asked him. I said it was soft. I didn't get to the bottom of the avocado dilemma. All right. It was a baseball. It's fantastic. It's perfect. 18 more minutes. Slash food.
Okay, so we asked self-proclaimed mac and cheese connoisseur and our friend David Rose, he's a chef and author and Food Network TV personality, to dish out his best mac and cheese recipe. He's joining it from his home in Atlanta. David, I mean, who knew <laughs> mac and cheese could get better? Yeah, but David, we're gonna kick it up a notch. Yeah. We like the idea. Yes. Several notches. Okay. Several okay. notches. Okay, what do we need? If we're gonna go shop today for what we're gonna yeah. cook, what do we need? Okay, first off, you need the lobster, you need cheese, you need heavy cream, you need spices, um, but the lobster is what truly makes this macaroni and cheese exceptional. So very first thing you wanna do, what I have here in my cast iron pan, cause you're in the South, so you gotta have cast iron. <laughs> I have lobster knuckle meat and claws. Feel free to Ooh, use lo uh, uh, lobster tails if you want to as well. Shrimp, chicken, bacon, you make it yours. So right now we have it lowly and slowly poaching in some butter, some garlic, mm. some parsley, a little bit of salt, and mm. white pepper. How long Let does that, that do take? its thing. Yeah. About five to six minutes, and you don't want to rush this process because seafood can cook very quickly, and you don't want to overcook it. So yeah. when it's nice and bright and red, and it still has oh, a little bit of give uh -huh. to it, you know, that's when you know it's ready. So what you do next then, Hoda, mm -hmm. what you do then next, Janet, is you remove that luscious, mm. delicious, mm, plump, yes. red, sweet lobster meat. Oh. Take that out. Oh, but what you want to do, you see that lobster fat, yeah. the butter, all that stuff that's yeah. in there, you want to keep that lobster fat and butter in there. Can what you, you want to do next is... Uh -huh. Can you use frozen lobster? I know, does that sound like something? No, but but yes. could you? Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. Yes, th this is actually frozen lobster right here. It'll be our secret, Dang. but most seafood <laughs> actually comes to the, uh, the market frozen already. You just want to okay. thaw it out and just make sure all the water is removed out of it. But yes, frozen seafood yeah. works that way. You can have it in the freezer when you're ready. Take it out, you're good to go. Can okay. you make some Great sauce question. for us? Please. Yes, let's make sauce because you got to have a nice creamy macaroni mm. and cheese sauce in there. So what we have here, lobster fat, butter. Mm. You want to do next is you want to make your roux. A roux mm. is very simple, very easy. It's a fancy French word for equal parts butter or fat and flour. And what you do is you just mm -hmm. add that flour. very slowly mm -hmm. add mm -hmm. the flour to mm -hmm. the lobster fat mm -hmm. and the butter because the first thing you learn in culinary school is fat is flavor. So the lobster <laughs> fat and the butter, it's delicious. It's going to kind of intensify that lobster flavor even more. All right. So once it comes together, it happens very quickly. Okay. It's kind of like a uh, wet sand-like consistency. Yes. Mm -hmm. So okay. if you can see right there, so yeah. that's the roux. That's going to thicken up our cheese sauce. All right. Mm -hmm. So let's get going. The fun what stuff. Cheese, what cheese? Heavy. Oh, there we go. Oh, heavy cream. cream. Okay. Dump what we have here is. In. Here you go. All right. We have pepper jack for a nice mild oh. spiciness. We have Parmesan for a nice oh. little nutty sweetness. And we have sharp cheddar for that nice little tang where it hits you right You're back here. So it's language. all about balance. Like all like about it. balance, mm -hmm. ladies. Okay. All right. Okay. So very easy. Don't blink. You might miss the steps. To the roux, you add the heavy cream heavy. because Good we're that. making mac and cheese. So why count calories? Yeah, we tip uh, it. So tip heavy it. cream. Mm. <laughs> if we're going to do it, we might as well do it. Right, ladies? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. All right, so you add that heavy cream and then you bring the heat up to a boil. Okay. What you're doing right now is you're allowing that lobster fat, you're allowing that butter and that flour mm. that made our roux to now meld and sort of homogenize with that heavy cream. And as that starts to thicken, we're gonna add our cheese sauce. Mm. So while that's doing that thing, we wanna impart even more flavor because any chance I have to add more flavor, I do it, because mm -hmm. why not? Agreed. So into there. We add a little bit of garlic powder, onion powder, cayenne for a little bit of heat, black pepper, and smoked paprika Ooh. for a little bit of smokiness. Look at that. Now, it's good Ooh. to know that this recipe, I actually make it on the grill because the grill has a nice smoky note, and it just adds a nice sweetness and balance what? even more so to that lobster mac and cheese. Wow. Okay. okay. And, and now what? We I gotta... assume we got to add the cheese. We got to do it real quick. Yes, yeah, so we got to add the cheese. Okay. So it starts to thicken up. We add all that lovely cheese mm. in there okay. like that. Oh, we give it a nice little whisk. Yes. All right. Okay, so, okay, so. And once that starts to come together, yeah. get nice and thick and become our cheese sauce, we want to add our pasta. Yes. Oh, I love using cavatappi. It's Italian for corkscrew. And I love the holes and the grooves. That's going to actually seal it and kind of, you know, capture oh, all of that sauce. sauce. And yes. I'm all about that good saucy add, noodle. Nobody wants those, to dry macaroni. Yeah, you're right. No, oh, so no. You just add, add that, that baby in there. Add that oh. baby in there. 
Lobster they're back in there I like that. I can't. Add a we little can't bit David. more of cheese oh, yeah. because why not? And then we fold that bad mamma jamma like they're together. Yes. Mamma jamma. Nice I know your generation. Will you show us? And yeah. show us. And oh. wait, a little bit. We want to add that Parmesan cheese yeah. on top. We don't have enough cheese. Want to add that Parmesan cheese for that nice brulee? I agree. We put that into the grill. We put that into the oven. Oven. We take it out. Bake it. Bada bing. Show us. Bada boom. Did you send us any? Oh. Wait, Bam. That's right the... there. Just... You see that brulee? Can just a, you just a fork. Can you smell it, ladies? Can yeah. Please, please. please. Yeah. Oh. I just want to hug that cheese. Can you pass you me that cheese? Please, David, yes, I, I just want a hug. I want a hug. Here. I want a hug. Virtual hug. David, <laughs> David, this was awesome. Here. Oh, look, he's look, feeding look. me. Oh. OK, ready? Hi, Ava. Where's your mouth? My mouth is there. All the taste and none of the calories. David, Thank you, David. David, that, that was amazing. Oh, God, I love him. Lady. By the way, he makes, I mean, it, I it's amazing, him. but there's something about David that adds the special sauce. Uh, exactly. But this recipe, head to todaygot.com slash food. Thank you, David. Thank you, David. He's the best. Alejandro Ramos is here hosting, by the way, congrats Thank on the new you. PBS show called The Great American Recipe. So who better to put a twist on some American classics? And with the 4th of July coming up, if you want to cook with us, by the way, you can scan the QR code for this recipe and to order the ingredients with just a single click. Just select add ingredients to card, schedule that pickup or delivery. Literally could not be easier. Alejandro, what doesn't seem easy to me is a clam bake. You it's know, something I would buy a ticket to go to because <laughs> I couldn't possibly do this at home, but that's not the case. No, it's not the case, and I've got a really fun kind of twist on it for you. So we're making a sheet pan clam bake. Okay. And that just makes it so much simpler. So we're gonna start out by par cooking the potatoes. Basically, you wanna get them cooking first so that they cook at the same time as the seafood. Okay, so you just hold like, potatoes. You don't want raw potatoes with your delicious right. seafood, and you don't wanna dry out the seafood. About seven minutes, boil them. Perfect, ready to go. Mm -hmm. Then you put them on a sheet pan, and then you add all the fun stuff. So this is like, you can help me out here. We've got yep. some andouille sausage. We've got some chorizo, which is my absolute favorite in the world. Just yep. put them on there. Corn, and then of course our clams. Yep. I'm using cherry stones. Get you the herbs in here too? Herbs. That's, yeah, what is that, uh, parsley, right? cilantro? Some parsley, some thyme. Yeah, some, yeah, um, yeah you can do tons of garlic. of garlic. I love a lot of garlic and everything I make. Well, this is easy, so yes, it's like a one sheet. Easy. Yeah, shrimp and uh, mussels too. And you know what, this is the sort of thing like see what's good, right? You can pick and choose what is your family like. You can have lobster. How much prep do you have to do the shrimp? You just dip. Literally, you just want, get the easy peel them and, one. Okay. Just buy them, buy them peeled already. And okay. spread them all out. And then it looks beautiful like this. And then what we do is we make our mixing liquid. Yep. So over here, I've got 
two cups of wine, some delicious melted butter. Mm -hmm. That adds so much flavor. Seafood seasoning. I think I could do this. Yeah, you could do this. Yep. Smoked paprika. You mix this all up. And I love this because you're just getting so many great flavors here and then you just pour that right on the pan. All of it. You don't save any for later. No, just let it rip. no, no, no. Let it all go. We've got our tasters over yeah. there. Yeah. How's what do you the guys taste, say? guys? It's right. fantastic. Right? Love the uh, Andrew Feels Andrew's like sausage. the best. Holiday yeah. weekend. Sausage and surprise. That's good. Yeah. Sausage I love the spicy spice. How's the heat? The heat's taste. good, huh? Oh, okay, there. good. Here's the thing. Yeah. You cover this with foil, like hot. really tightly wrapped. Yep. Pop it in the oven. For how long? Uh, it depends. About 25, 35 minutes. Just check it. Basically, you want the clams to be the open. The clams to open up. Once the clams are open, you're ready to feast. Look how wow, that's amazing. Table, serve it with some bread, more melted oh, butter. Okay. Everybody can feast, enjoy like our beautiful, amazing. What do you guys? Delicious, right? Yeah, so right. perfect. Simple. It is simple. You so make simple. it look simple. Right. What it. else are you making? And all right, so my other thing is, I love things that have a little bit of Latin flair. You know why? I love it. <laughs> so gotta we're doing, we gotta represent. So we're doing a Mexican street corn style pasta salad. So basically yeah. taking that elote, oh, espitas, right, matching it, it with got the macaroni seconds. salad. Let's dump it in. You, okay, so you char up your corn, yep. make a sal uh, sauce with some mayonnaise, some chili, some chipotle, all of that. Salt. You mix it all in with the macaroni. Oh, here it is, yes. That's good. This is a great idea. Yeah. That's the important Part. You're gonna perfect. taste it. It's a great mac Get all I don't those love like macaroni salad that much either, but a street corn version of it, it I great. like. You know what, too? Because I don't like getting the corn in my teeth, oh my so God. I like being able to it's eat really it with good. a spoon. That's yeah. so delicious, right? If nothing else. Steal this idea. Yay! Despite rising food prices across the country, lobster rolls still remain quite popular. NBC News correspondent and host of Stay Tuned over on Snapchat, Savannah Sellers, went to Maine to meet the, yeah. the real Luke behind Luke's yeah. Lobster. There is a Luke, and we went fishing for lobster together. Oh, it was really fun, actually. Jenny? Yeah, we did. We nice. did. I think you'll see some of that. We actually caught a lot. I'll tell you about it after, too. But that's right. Luke Holden is a third-generation lobster man who started a career in finance in New York. But then after searching for his go-to comfort food and not finding it here, he realized a new dream. Take a look. I loved the excitement of dropping a trap overboard, letting it sit for a couple of days, and hauling it up and just wondering what was inside. Luke Holden grew up on the Maine coast, obsessed with lobster. I'm actually a third generation lobsterman, so I grew up on the working waterfront. I love this industry, I love being a part of it. After graduating from college and getting a job in finance, it was that first love that sparked an idea. But you didn't think at first that you necessarily we're going to do this, right? I had a great experience on it. It was just, it was a job. I was sitting at my desk on a summer Sunday afternoon. I was missing home. I went online looking for something that reminded me of home, which was a Maine style lobster roll. <laughs> and there was nothing. So Luke approached his dad with a business proposal to bring a quintessential Maine lobster shack to the middle of Manhattan. He looked at it, he said, I think you can open a lobster shack in New York City for 35,000 bucks. And I said, yeah, I think I can. Let's try it. And so he actually borrowed against his 401k to come up with half the money. OK, so you've got the money. You're like, I need a partner. So what'd you do? I wrote this post up that I put on Craigslist. It was like, first time I've ever probably gone on Craigslist. 
<laughs> You'd never needed the couch or something before. <laughs> the post was something like, I have no experience, <laughs> limited funding, and like, we just gotta figure this out together. And I got like 700 responses, <gasps> and then I come across Ben's. I met Luke and it was immediately clear that like, this is a guy who has one passion his whole life, oh. and that's lobster. The two signed a lease, and just 30 days later, opened Luke's Lobster. I left Ben and my father that morning at like 8.30. Because you, by the way, still have a day job. And I'm like, good luck. And I'm not really expecting that really we're gonna do any sales. So it's like noon time, and absolute crickets. At two o'clock, either Ben or my father services, when they're like, yeah, there's a line around the block. Like Jeff's heading back up to Maine to go get more lobster. Seven months later, Luke quit his day job. I took the $35,000 salary and no health insurance. I was all in. What'd your mom think of that? My mom cried. But her concern was short-lived. Over the next 10 years, Luke and Ben launched 40 lobster shacks across the country and world. Oh. All right. Wow, it's kind of interesting you put the shoe on first. And they did something else to expand, too. We realized that having the direct connection to the fishermen, we were ultimately going to have to control our own destiny by starting our own seafood production plant here mm. in Maine and not having to kind of go out on the open market and buy lobster from whoever happened to be selling. Today, Luke's Lobster <laughs> controls everything from ocean to table. I mean, we've been in charge of that lobster from the moment it was caught. <laughs> All right. But when COVID hit, so did a whole new set of problems. It was like, I was a little kid. I literally called my father and I said, I just need you to come to work today. Ugh. And I was like, just crying. We were over 600 people at the height of 2019. We laid off everybody besides 23 people. Wow. Which is crazy. And then we just, um... <laughs> yeah, I know, it's hard. And then we just like started making plants. Slowly but surely, they've built back. I mean, how do things feel for you right now? There's like light at the end of the tunnel. The sun is starting to shine. It's lobster roll season. Speaking of which. All right. I have to tell you all something, a little bit of a confession. This is actually going to be my first lobster roll. What? Like ever. That blows my mind, though. <laughs> <laughs> this is really good. I know you have two little daughters. Do you think this is going to be a fourth generation lobstering family? I have a three-year-old who will have a license when she's seven. <laughs> I want them to be very comfortable in the ocean, and, and I suspect they'll love just the excitement of, mm -hmm. of putting that trap into the ocean and pulling up and seeing what's inside. And, and I'm like really excited to teach them about that. <laughs> oh. What a, what a great guy. guy. I, I know, know, he was so great. And now as many companies had to do during COVID, Luke's team pivoted to keep their business going. They started an e-commerce site to sell fish directly to customers, and they launched a line of products at Whole Foods. It's actually two revenue streams that not only kept Luke's Lobster afloat, but all the fishermen they support, people like Captain Steve Train, mm -hmm. who was in that piece, showed me how to fish for lobster, yeah. showed me how to band up the claws. Everything was pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, Thanks, Captain Wait, Steve. you actually did the banding? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. That's a little With this scary. tool and everything? Yeah. Oh, it was very Probably. scary. Yeah. Yes. When you thanks, pull them out. Thanks to Luke's. Yeah. These are great. So what are your thoughts on lobster rolls? I liked it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I'm not big on some... <laughs> Craig loves it. <laughs> I mean <laughs> Do you like butter on it? It's butter, mm -hmm. and what's the other one? It's like a mayonnaise. You can type. have it more mayonnaise. -y. This is the perfect mix mm -hmm. of seasonings. It's not too. You've got a piece of meat. Flip it because. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Craig. <laughs> I'm just dropping this lobster. Great. Well done. Mm -hmm. really good. And we always love it when people bring food into the studio. Now <laughs> you're welcome back anytime. Another summer back to normal. <laughs> Thank you, Savannah. <laughs> Thank you, Luke's. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot how to eat. Really I just bit my cheek. No, no. Oh, no. no. that hurts. You need to slow down. I was like inhaling it. So excited. Hey everybody, welcome to The Boost. It is the first day of summer and today we have all the inspiration you need to get you outside so you can enjoy some fun in the sun. Up first, we are taking the scenic route as NBC's Gotti Schwartz joins one conservationist on his epic trek across the country. Let's see what this trailblazer is all about. To say ultra hiker Rue McKinrick has a thirst for adventure would be an understatement. Do you run across a lot of like dangerous animals? I had a mountain lion that was continuing to come into camp, and I felt the need 
at some point just to pack up and walk through the night. Whoa, whoa, I, whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa, hold yeah. on, <laughs> hold on. Yeah. You decided to pack up yeah. and then walk into the darkness? Yeah, I felt like I'd make it on my terms. But that is the price you pay when you have a dream as big as his. You see, Rose on a mission to pave the way for the greatest trail America has ever seen, a 14,000 mile American perimeter trail. Think the Pacific Crest Trail, made famous by Reese Witherspoon in Wild. Oh my God, what have I done? But the APT would be over five times longer, circumnavigating the entire US. A track that took him three years to complete the first time he did it. In some ways, I got the easy part out of the way already. Walking all around the United <laughs> yeah, States. The hard part now, doing it again to lay the groundwork for what he hopes could be a national trail system in the future. We have a highway system, and you can drive across the country if you, if you like. I think it's reasonable that we also have trails that mimic that kind of system. To connect us. To connect us. And when it finally came time for us to part ways, the sheer magnitude of his dream came into view. I've never ended an interview like this, but I guess it was goodbye, right? I think this is the end of the road. I'm headed to the car. You're literally headed to Oregon. Yeah, I'm just gonna start walking that <laughs> way. <laughs> Maybe I'll beat you there. Rue McKinrick, a man who doesn't mind taking the long way home. Gotti Schwartz, NBC News, San Jacinto, California, 900 miles away from Bend. This next woman used nature to help her own healing, but when she started a Facebook group to get other women outdoors, she never imagined how her small idea would end up changing the lives in some big ways. Take a look. If you are on the water and you can really immerse yourself and it feels like as if you're this little ant on this big body of water. It feels very liberating. Tanya Walker knows the joys of kayaking and she's made it her purpose to share it. All the first time kayakers! Woo! As the founder of Black Women Who Kayak in Austin, Texas, Tanya hosts events for women to connect with one another and with nature. I have never before kayaked in my life until this group. It's Tanya's way of giving back to a community that's given her so much after a divorce in 2005 left her and her two young sons without a home. She turned to the Austin Shelter for Women and Children. When I was in the lowest point of my life, my community helped me and my boys. So it's important for me to give back to my community. As she got back on her feet, she found spending time outdoors to be healing. So in 2018, she decided to share that experience with others. For African-American culture, one of the things is we don't do certain things. It's not the fact that we don't do certain things, but it's why we don't do these things. The barriers of not feeling welcome or when it comes to water is not knowing how to swim or being afraid of big bodies of water. Tanya tackled these barriers head on. She partnered with local businesses to offer swimming lessons and hosted outdoor activities like hiking and canyoneering to spark interest in nature. I took advantage of the opportunity to take some swimming lessons before I actually had my first kayaking event. And then once I was on the water, I just immediately fell in love with it. The spaces that you don't see us or you rarely see us, those are the areas that I want to address and I want to make sure that, you know, those spaces are welcoming. The group has grown to more than 2,000 members across eight chapters in the U.S. And now the group does more than just kayak. She recently changed the name to Black Women Who. It could be scary at times doing something that you've never done before, but the cool thing is is that you're not doing it alone. You're doing it with somebody else who looks like you, but are also probably doing it the first time as well. To get the word out, Tanya wrote about the group for Soul City magazine. It was a move that proved life-changing for Heath Creech, the magazine's publisher. In our first and second conversation, I mentioned kind of casually that um, I was on dialysis because I have kidney failure. And she said, ever since I was a little girl, I've always wanted to donate an organ. Wait, what? When he told me what he was on dialysis, that conversation just got fueled and then it started, I just started thinking about, hey, I could, I could help and, and be a, a kidney donor for him. She went through the testing process and they were a match. Heath and Tanya underwent surgery in January 2023, just six months after meeting for the first time. The operation was a success. This is definitely a lifelong connection. Tanya, she's just 
a natural born, giving, kind hearted, loving kind of person. Six weeks post op, Tanya is back on the water for the first time at the Texas Rowing Center, leading the largest group of women she's hosted on the Colorado River. So, is this your first time kayaking? Awesome. I love what Tanya has put together. It gives me the ability to connect with other black women and be outdoors. I was able to turn my passion, which is kayaking, into my purpose to take other women on the water to have that same feeling that I get. That's been the most empowering part of this whole journey. Up next, you can't talk summer without mentioning camps. We're gonna take you to a few inspiring options coming up right after the break. Tis the season for summer camp, and for these kids in Rhode Island, that means Shark Camp. It's an amazing program giving high school students a hands-on experience to learn all about these amazing creatures. Who's ready to see some sharks? Welcome to the Captain Burt. This is a URI's research vessel. On this day, we've joined 13 high school students on a high seas adventure, all here for the University of Rhode Island's shark camp. What color are blue sharks? What color are blue sharks? It's a week-long deep dive into the world of marine biology. At the helm of this hands-on class, Professor Brad Weatherby. Their shells are made of calcium. It's one of the... Who usually spends his time with college students in the classroom. Some of them never been on a boat. Some have never been fishing. Some of them have never been to the ocean before, if you can believe that. And this is called the... This is the Ocean State, Rhode Island. The journey begins in Wickford, Rhode Island, as the fishing trawler heads out on Narragansett Bay. All right, let's set her in. The crew drops the research vessel's huge net and they begin dragging for sea life. We're in about 60 feet of water and the net is probably about 300 feet behind the boat. You're gonna need a bigger boat. It's natural for students to fear a jaw-sized shark, but a great white will not make an appearance this day. The catch includes all types of sea creatures, and yes, sharks. Oh my God! But a kinder, gentler, almost toothless variety. This is a dogfish shark. A shark? Yes. And you're holding a shark? Yes. Oh my God. And you're completely cool with that? Yes. Because? Because they don't hurt humans, and they're very small, and they're actually surprisingly docile and shy. You can stick your finger in their mouth, and they really don't hurt. Wow. Look at that. Well, these are my favorites whenever we pick them up. Like oh, it does. It like I'll call him Sparky. Bye. The kids turned scientists now have a mission. First, to sort the catch. This one's a crustacean bucket. All right, who knows what this it. is? Right. A striped sea robin. Who wants to hold it? This is an American lobster. This is a clear nose skate. If you look at this nose, you can see right through it. It's like a little window. What's this big vein called? This vein? This thing, that's part of their skeleton. 
Their body cavity is right in there. And next, they measure the sharks. 29 inches. That's a big one. I've named him William. Guiding the students on their newfound discoveries, Mary Carmen Serna, an undergrad URI marine biology major. Do you remember a moment when you had that look on your face, that aha? A hundred percent. I mean, they get so excited when the trawl comes up to see all the fish, to get hands on, you know, and see what field work is actually like. Now, had you ever seen a skate? Whoa! <laughs> the camp is about windows to worlds the kids might otherwise never see. There you go. Congratulations. This is something I've always wanted to do, but I wanted to do it even more after this. As the day concludes, all the fish are carefully released back to their undersea homes. And this is the last dogfish shark that's now going to be released into the wild. There we go. What do you guys all think of shark camp now? Now, let's head to an awesome summer camp on Long Island here in New York. It's called Camp Anchor. It's for kids with special needs, and you can immediately feel the love and joy, not just from the campers, but also from the staff and volunteers who make it happen year after year. Take a look. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. If you've ever spent a day at Camp Anchor, describing it comes easy. The greatest place on earth. Love. Camp Anchor is happy. If you can't already tell, there's an energy in the air, an infectious spirit. The minute the children and the adults get off the bus, it's, it's pure joy. Yeah, they can let their guard down. They can just be themselves. They have different disabilities, but the abilities, they shine. Camp Anchor staff and its 275 volunteers Let's go, Joe. spend their six weeks of summer leading and teaching over 750 campers, all with special needs. This is my 32nd summer. What do you love about it? Uh, it's the kids. It's just coming down here and seeing their smiles that really kind of change your, your perspective of things, makes you realize what's important. What's the age range of campers? Um, six to whenever. Look, look, it's a hug. Aww. You can stay until you want. Give me an idea of day to day. What happens here? You can have dance, you have sports, fitness, drama, home ec. Anchor has been serving this Long Island, New York community for over 50 years. It's a special bond here, and it truly is, and in the words of these campers, a magical place to be. And its heart lies with its campers, like 11-year-old Gavin Sands, who was born with Down syndrome. Gavin is truly our greatest joy. He's our fourth child. Camp Anchor is a place where I know that he's safe. He's given so many opportunities to shine and to build his confidence. We feel happy, we feel blessed and grateful. <laughs> The things he does here empowers him to, to see that he can, he can do anything. And for the Sands, Camp Anchor is a family affair. I've been working here for six years. This is my second summer here. This is my first summer. What is it like when you see your brother at camp? I love seeing Gavin at camp. I always run up to him and give him a hug. It's so nice to be in a place where we're all together and Gavin's so accepted and it's so inclusive. This camp inspires so many people to like go into the special education field as their profession. I'm actually becoming a special education teacher so I want to be here literally for the rest of my life. When Gavin comes home and you say okay tell me about your day today at Camp Anchor what's a typical response? I have the best day ever and that's every day days that Gavin and his volunteer buddy Katya enjoy. Can I hang with you? Yes. Let's go. Filled with music. Now your jumps up. Some animal go. yoga. <laughs> and the main event, surfing. How do you feel when you're on the surfboard? I feel happy. To know that your son has a place like this to go to, what does that mean to you both? It's like he's, he's family from the very day he got here. It's like him being home. I mean, this is home for them. Anchor is my second family. Yeah, nice work! You come here and you just have that feeling of, I'm accepted. You know, I'm allowed to be here. There's a quote when you come in that reads, to the world you may be one person, but to one person you may be the world. And I think that just captures the essence of this beautiful camp that 
allows these campers to form incredible friendships, not only with other campers, but with the staff, the volunteers, the administration, and they form these friendships and memories that they'll treasure forever. Oh, we love to see those happy campers. Just ahead, the Today Show team heads out for a little summertime fun. That's right after the break. We're back on the boost, and if you're looking for a new hobby this summer, pickleball is one of the fastest growing sports in the country. The number of courts more than tripling in the last 10 years, and our Today Show team headed out for a mostly friendly competition in our first ever Today Show Pickleball Tournament. Let's take a look. I like a sport where you could do it barefoot while holding a rosé. That's my kind of sport. The closest thing to pickleball that I've ever done is when I'm done making my Bloody Mary, I put a pickle right on in the middle there. I have never played pickleball, but I think I would love it because it has all the things I love. I love tennis, I love ping pong, it's right in between. It's true, pickleball is a cross between tennis, ping pong, and badminton. Players use paddles and a wiffle ball. The court is smaller than a tennis court and you serve underhanded. Players are supposed to stay out of the kitchen, an area right near the net. I've never held a racket. No skill, all heart. That's all Can't you Can't lose, baby. I've never played pickleball before. I don't have any athleticism, so I'm very intimidated right now. I'm excited. Chanel Jones and Carson Jones, that's my middle name. Uh, are going to be a great team today. It's just sort of an easy, accessible, fun, lighthearted sport to play, and you can play it at any age. I always love a sport where they say, oh, and you know what? Oh, you nice little old person, you can play this. You'll barely know that you're moving. Pickleball is sweeping the nation. Pickleball has been around since the 60s, and in the last decade, the game has been a hit among seniors. But now the pickleball craze is attracting fans of all ages. There's even a magazine dedicated to the sport. Its publisher, Wayne Dollard, runs pickleball camps in over 100 cities around the country, including this one in St. George, Utah. There is a huge pickleball boom going on. Last year, the numbers came in at four and a half million now. It's not just fun, it's a heart healthy activity that lowers blood pressure and strengthens agility, and it's extremely social. Wait for it. Seems like a perfect combo for our Today Show team. So we took a swing at our first Today Pickleball Tournament. Go Team Blue! Hey, Blue Team! I will look out for us, Team Orange. 
Go Team Orange. Go Team! We're going to get them. Before Come we on. faced off in doubles matches, a little warm-up and some pointers from the pickleball pros here at Court 16. You always have to be back behind this yellow line. This yellow one. It has to be underhand. Yes. Okay, so it needs to stay straight. Most games are 11 points, but we're kind of in a pickle with an early wake-up call tomorrow. So our round-robin game is first to score five points. So it's Al and I against pop starters Carson and Chanel. Oh, Ooh, nice depth, Carson. Go, Carson! Let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. You're better than this. Today. I know, I am. Oh, All right, there we go, on. there we go. Come so, on, Chanel Lee! Yeah! Oh, that's oh, a, that's wow. a good one, that was a good Woo! one. We woke the sleeping beast. I know. Okay, 5 2. All right, nice, good game. We'll play, we'll play. Uh, yeah. we'll play. Let's go, partner. You know what? I want to play. Now I feel like I've got my sea legs. Yeah. Bronze medal <laughs> for last. Chanel and Carson advance to round two against the fierce fourth hour duo, Hoda and Jenna. Yes. Ooh, is that out? Yes, Queen! Good. 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 That, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. Come on. Oh, oh, good try. It's okay, JBH. Got it in. Go hard. Oh, oh good try. Good try, Chanel. Jenna, way to go. See? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Uh, you got Jenna. it, baby. Let's go, Miss Jenna. Oh, yeah. oh you, you got it, Jenna. Jenna. Got it. Yes, let's go. All right. Feeling it. Oh. Game 5-1. Darn it. That was, that was not, not my pop star best. Let's see some Good action. Good game. Good game. Good game. Still get a drink. Oda and Jenna for the W, but it wasn't over yet. Yeah, the other two of us take you two on. Yeah, you should. Okay. We mixed it up, and Jenna and Hoda challenged Carson and me for one more final round. Come on. Yeah, Come on, there you go. Me. Let's go. One ball at a time, baby. We're not dinking around. No, we're not. <laughs> Oh, no! Let's I took go. it out of the air! I took it out of the air! Too bad for you! Okay. Come on! Oh, no! Yeah. Let's go! Let's go! Go! Oh! Wow! Let's go. A little too much. <laughs> go! Yes! Ben. Spanky! I go, baby! There you go! You! Yeah, you! I got it! Oh, I got that it. was the best volley oh. yet! Okay, okay, it's okay. Okay! Got it! Oh, shit! Yes. We won! We won! That's a pop start oh, no. plus, baby! No. Hey, Thank guys. Let, let's have a dink. <laughs> Good one. That's pickleball humor, it's friends. Pickleball joke. Oh. Love it. Cheers. 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 Oh, love it. <laughs> Cheers. We've got another fun feel-good story for you coming right after the break. on the boost and it's that time of day we've got your daily morning boost take a look and now the stage is clear for Wyndham Clark yeah! who takes down all the stars 
in Los Angeles to win the United States Open. We are back with the star of your morning boost, 29 year old Wyndham Clark. Carson had to come for this question. Wyndham! Let's go! The golf world by storm. That Would you just take us to that moment, that final putt? You were trying not to cry, and you're trying right yeah, now. I, well, the, I had about a 50-footer before that, and when it stopped up about here, I mean, I did everything I could to not just celebrate then because I knew, you know, I'm not going to, barring something crazy, I wasn't going to miss it. And just sitting there, I'm like, I had so much emotion, and I was trying not to cry, and, and then the putt went in, and, the, you know, the, the emotions came out, so... It's an amazing moment. Thank That's you for making our Father's Day weekend. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah you're it was incredible. <laughs> and what a month! I mean, you, uh, you won. It's your second win, right? You won yes. in May. I mean, you're, yeah. you're really this is like a hot summer for you so far. Yeah, uh, I actually had a, a friend send me a pretty funny text. They said. Uh, Siri, play record year, and that's all he <laughs> sent to me. So it was pretty, pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, I mean, you're kind of new on. I mean, this is one of your first events, is it not? Like, uh, yeah. For P the PGA or the it, U.S. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. So this is now my, I think, seventh start okay. in a major championship. Um, only third in the U.S. Open, and yeah. so you know, I've tried playing in this thing for since I was like 15 years old. So I've tried so many times. And so to finally at one play in them is awesome. And then now to win it is pretty surreal. Uh, one of the things I love about your story, and you said this in the, uh, in the post-match presser, you talked about your mom and how you dedicated the win to her. She died of breast cancer back in 2013. Did you, did you feel her presence with you there on the course throughout the week? Yeah, you know, honestly, I, I haven't felt her presence that much in a long time. And my mom lived in L.A. and where she met my dad and, um, I had people throughout the week come up to me and show me pictures, which oh. was so cool. And I didn't even know who the people were. They're like, hey, yeah. I knew your mom. Um, she was so great. And they'd show me pictures when she was in her early 20s and uh, stuff I haven't even seen. And it was like so cool. And it just created this vibe that I was like, man, I really feel the presence of my mom here. Oh. Um, and then as I kept playing and it started turning into a pretty special week, um, definitely on Sunday, I, you know, leaned into that and, mm. and felt her presence. So it was... Uh, you know, like I said, it was very surreal. Well, fan favorite Ricky Fowler was right there, too. And he, he there's a nice moment I saw a video. What a touch of class uh, from both of you. He yeah. came up to you. What did he say to you? Well, so Ricky, he said a bunch of things. But he honestly said, hey, man, you deserve this. You mm -hmm. are a major champion. He goes, enjoy <laughs> it. Um, he's, you know, I've, he's kind of been a little bit of a role model. Um, I went to Oklahoma State. He went to Oklahoma State. And he would come back and talk to us. And, you know, someone I was like, man, I want to be like Ricky someday. Yeah. And so... <laughs> One, to be out there with him is really cool, and then to play with him on Sunday, and then now to be a major champion, it's just, wow. um, you know, wow. and he's a class act. He's one of the best. Wyndham! Let it go! Congratulations. Congratulations. It's just the beginning. Thank you for joining us on this first official day of summer. Now let's all get outside and get some sunshine and fresh air. We'll see you next time right here on Today All Day. Good morning. Welcome to today. Every day. We are adding to the star power in our studio. The biggest names only on today. See, we're coming in this early, right? Everybody, it's today. Like I won the lottery. How do you feel at this age, this stage? Liberated. We're just getting started, folks. Ain't no stop with us now. The boys are back in town. The boys are back in town. The miracle. This has been fantastic. Everything and everyone you're talking about. Only on today. Thanks for joining us for Consumer Confidential Summer Safety Edition. Now we're gonna talk about keeping safe this summer, but we're also gonna tell you how to save on summer essentials. With inflation reaching record levels, we'll give you some tips to make your money work. But first, the Consumer Product Safety Commission says drownings usually spike during the summer, but these accidents are preventable. Here are some simple reminders. 
the unmistakable sound of summer. Kids playing in the pool. But without proper attention, fun can quickly take a tragic turn. On average, more than 900 kids die each year from drowning in the U.S. Drowning is the leading cause of unintentional death among kids ages one to four. And it's not just pools you need to be worried about. Ponds like this and other natural bodies of water can also lure kids. So we brought in Mary O'Donohue. She's the senior aquatics director at the YMCA to talk to us about some basic summer safety tips. It takes as little as 20 seconds for someone to go under the water and not be able to get back to the surface. There are some basic tips that you can evaluate uh, how your children are comfortable in the water. Okay, I have my three girls waiting, eager to get into the pool, so let's go. We are all suited up, ready to go. Emmy and Odessa, they're older, they know how to swim. Renly does not know how to swim yet, and this would be their first swim of the season, so what should we be doing right now? We're gonna look for a Coast Guard approved life jacket for non-swimmers, and you're also looking at the weight category. So this looks like it will fit her. It's 30 to 50 pounds. You want to make sure it fits snugly. How does that feel, Boo? Good? Next, the big girls are up for a quick water competency check. You want to make sure that they can independently submerge in the water. When they come back up, that they can turn around and look to see where the safest place is to get out or grab a hold of and be able to climb out independently. Check to see if they can swim the length of the pool and ask them to tread water for a minute. Okay, so Mary, what if you have a child that's not uh, really into being in the pool? And that's fine, just let them be comfortable in how they are. Sometimes it's just sitting on the wall, putting their feet in, having the uh, Coast Guard approved life jacket on will ensure that if they do get into the water, they're going to be safe. Pool toys are fun, but they can also be dangerous because they block your view of who's in the water. It doesn't look like there are any kids in the water right now, but there are. So make sure you take the pool toys out when you're not using them. It's also important to have a sturdy gate with openings that don't allow little ones to slip through. And you wanna make sure the gate is self-locking. And don't forget kiddie pools and above ground pools. Experts say children can drown in as little as an inch and a half of water. So empty those smaller pools after using them and remove the ladder from larger pools. And no matter what kind of water the kids are in, always designate a water watcher, an adult assigned to watch the kids at all times. Tips to keep your family safe while swimming this summer. Now, even if your child is a good swimmer, fatigue can kick in. So set a timer to remind everyone to take a break and importantly, hydrate. With more on summer safety, NBC News medical contributor, Dr. Natalie Azar joins us now. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Vic. So Dr. Azar, let's talk about heat exhaustion. Yes. Let's get an idea of like, what are some of the warning signs we should be watching out for? So the number one thing, Vicki, is that people can either pass out or they have a core body temperature of 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Mm. Most of us don't have a digital thermometer on board, so others signs and symptoms to look for would be uh, confusion, headache, lightheadedness, dry skin. People think a lot, well, if you're overheated, you're gonna be sweating a lot. Mm. No, people who have heat exhaustion will actually have very red, very hot, very dry skin. That's a very good clue. For. Okay, so if you see someone who is experiencing that, what should you do? So the first thing to do is move them into a cool area. So a shady area under a tree, air conditioning if you can. We have some props with us yeah. here. If you have the, um, uh, if you're near ice packs, let's say you're at a picnic yeah. or something okay. like that, the places to put them under the neck under the arm, in the groin, those are areas where a lot of blood vessels, that can start okay. to cool the temperature down. A big misconception is that you put people in an ice bath. Uh -huh. We don't want you doing that unless it was someone who has exertional exhaustion, meaning like a, a, an athlete who did a vigorous workout. Mm -hmm. They can go in an ice tub. Nobody else should go into an ice tub and call 911. You should actually do that before you start initiating first aid because it is a medical emergency. Okay, that's good to know. So let's talk about prevention. How do you prevent yourself from becoming overheated? Well, it's really about dehydration. Mm -hmm. So obviously, sun exposure is the big one. And I think people often think, well, I'm just going to drink a lot of water and a lot of fluids, and that certainly can be beneficial. But you can also eat foods that have a lot or a high water content. Yeah. We're talking strawberries, uh -huh. peaches, lettuce in salads, watermelon, yeah. celery, cucumbers. What to avoid? Alcohol is a big one. Alcohol definitely dehydrates. And we have here our good old... Yeah, what about coffee? So we did think for a long time that caffeine acted as what's called a diuretic. Uh -huh 
saying oh. that it made you pee a lot yes. and that you would lose fluid that way. You really can't dehydrate yourself with caffeinated beverages really? on their own. Right. So if you're drinking an iced coffee, there's a lot of water in there too. So that's you okay. Enjoy your caffeinated beverages, but just keep an, keep an eye on how much you're sweating and how much you're taking in. And make sure you drink more water for alcohol. That's like an important rule, right? <laughs> okay. Alcohol in the sun is just a big no-no. I know. And, but that it mixes a lot during summer. So people got to pay really attention. Does. Let's talk careful. about this, the debate over spray sunscreen versus cream sunscreen. Yes. Is there a difference and is one better than the other? Right. So if you ask, most dermatologists will say the best sunscreen is the sunscreen that you actually apply. And mm. you know this, mm -hmm. Vic, my kids are a little older now, yeah. but trying to have your fidgety kids stay still to apply lotion is not that easy. Right. So for a lot of us moms and dads out there, it is easier to spray. Okay. Spray is fine as long as the spray is actually getting onto the skin. So be aware of, of wind and that kind of thing. Yeah. I like to apply the spray and then make sure that you rub it in, but it's just as good SPF 30 or above. Okay. Reapply every two hours. Reapply, especially if you're doing vigorous exercise and, and sweating. sweating or mm -hmm. swimming. Every time you come out of the pool, you have to reapply and let it sink in for about 15 or 20 minutes before and you go back in the sun. If you're spraying, make sure you do it outside in a well-ventilated spot. In a, in a well-ventilated spot, yes. Okay, and I want to mention, obviously, you talked about you have we have hats, and of course, that sun protective clothing is important, too. Very, and you want to do, generally speaking, like colored light, okay. weight, hats, that kind of thing. If you can look through the piece of clothing, that's not thick enough, oh, right? You want to be able it's, it's okay. more like you want it to be more opaque, mm -hmm. light colored and light, but still that you can't see the light through it. Then you know you're pretty well covered. Dr. Natalie Azar, you are the best. Thank you Thank for covering you so sun much safety for having with us. us. Good to see you. All right, well, still to come from grilling to fireworks, hacks to keep your family safe all season long, and later, save or splurge how to stretch your dollars on summer necessities. Consumer Confidential is coming right back. Good morning, everybody. Here's what's happening in your neck of the woods. Whoa. You deserve to be celebrated. Way to go, Reynolds. Oh, Al. Al, you're all of our heroes. Yeah. Y'all love Al Roker. favorite holidays, 4th of July, but before you do anything, some must-see safety tips and hacks to make sure everyone has a great time while staying safe. It's the 4th of July, and that means summer. Time to head outside and enjoy the weather. And if you're like me, there will be a lot of grilling happening in your house, but are you using one of these to clean your grates? Well, the metal bristles work great for cleaning, but they can also come out of the brush and get stuck in your food. So here is a fantastic alternative, an onion. Yeah, an onion. Check it out. It works really well to get all that gunk off of the grates. And if you don't have an onion, another quick, easy trick, aluminum foil. Just take a ball and get to scrubbing. Also, as you're getting ready to grill that meat, make sure you keep it refrigerated. The USDA says anything that's uncooked left out for more than an hour in this summer weather could make you sick. 
serving adult beverages at the party? I like to use two different color cups, red ones for the grown-ups and the alcoholic beverages, blue ones for the kid-friendly drinks. There you go, ask me. That way, there is no confusion. And it just wouldn't be the 4th of July without fireworks. If you're heading out to a big show, it's gonna be amazing. But one thing's for sure, it's gonna be loud. And if you are bringing your little ones, don't forget the ear protection. I like these ones, they go over the ears just like this. Jay's helping us out. Those feel okay, Jay? Awesome. And if you can't find those in time, well, these work just as well, the traditional earplugs. Now let's talk about the at-home fireworks. So much fun, but they can also be incredibly dangerous. So before you light off those one, two, three goes or the rainbow shower, wow, this brings me back. Make sure you've done your homework. Fire extinguisher at the ready, have it out, know how to use it. And don't forget, sparklers, very fun, but even something as small as this can start a big fire. So have the bucket of water ready and when everything's done, extinguish it and you're safe. And of course, check to see if it's legal to light fireworks where you live. Here's a great tip for when you venture out into the crowds for fireworks. Use a temporary tattoo with your name and phone number so if your child gets lost, someone can call you right away. And you can get this temporary tattoo paper online, print it out at home, that's what I did. If you don't have time for that, permanent marker works just as well. Pool parties are always fun, but here's some tips. Be sure to designate a responsible and sober adult. I'll take that, thank you, to watch the pool. As an additional safety measure, there's a number of high-tech tools that can help you in case of a potential pool safety incident. There's this bracelet by Safety Turtle, and it will sound an alarm the second your kid hits the water. And this is super loud. There's no way you're gonna miss this alarm. And it works for your pets too if your dog is not a strong swimmer, right, Peanut? And you've definitely heard this before, but don't forget about the sunscreen. Reapply that sunscreen about every hour. We all have our phones with us all the time. Just set a timer, easy reminder. And a great rule of thumb for exactly how much sunscreen to use, the experts recommend a shot glass full. But really, you can never get too much. And just a reminder, every year animal shelters see an influx of pets who get spooked by the fireworks and run off. So make sure those tags on your pets are updated with your correct phone number and address. And also just keep your pets inside during the fireworks. All right, when we come back, your summer shopping guide, where to find the deals and later how to host the hottest summer get togethers. Consumer Confidential is coming right back. Welcome to today. So happy to see you guys. Would you like my boost? Yes. Back, here we go. Sometimes we just do things to help. That's our Hoda. Happy birthday. We got an awesome crowd, y'all.
We are back with our Consumer Confidential telling you what to buy in the month of June and what you may want to skip to save some money. So here to break it down is our senior investigative and consumer correspondent, Vicki Wynn. Vicki, good morning. Good morning, hey guys. So they say June is a good time to buy for dads, yes. graduates. Is that true? I First of all, yes, and Father's also, Day is coming up. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Father's Day. Oh, it's Father's Day. Day. Oh, 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's Father's Day. this segment. Greeny didn't oh, put that on there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what else is modestly priced right now? Okay, we'll talk about dads and grads. Let's start with grads. Craig, you wanted to ask, is cash okay? Cash is always okay. Yes. I think we got to transition you and wean you off of gift cards. And the reason why, there's $21 billion in unused gift cards right now sitting mm -hmm. in American households. $21 cash, billion? Cash always gets spent. $21 billion. I the average that. person sitting on $175 in gift cards. Mm -hmm. So if you want to give cash to grads, they're always going to be able to use it. If you have a grad that's really into DIY, summer is the time when everybody's getting out there doing those projects themselves, dads as well. So tools and gadgets tend to go on sale. Home Depot, Lowe's, uh, Sears, those are all great places to find all of those little things that you need or a tool set, a tool box this time of year is great. The other thing that goes on sale in June is athletic apparel because mm. January is the big push, new year, new you. June, the weather is great again, right. so look for uh, Adidas, Nike, okay. Puma, the typical places, but also lots of deals, buy one, uh, buy more, save more type deals at places like JCPenney and Kohl's on shorts, tank tops, all the things you need for that summer refresh. I hear some people are training for a marathon, so this is a good time for you, Chanel. Okay. There you go, yes. get some new sneakers. And then think about it, you're outside, so first aid supplies, go and check that kit in your car, in your medicine oh, cabinet, make sure everything is, is fresh, up to date, the band-aids are still sticky. Amazon last year had 50% off of band-aids and Neosporin and all that good stuff, so you want the, those things on hand, all right, sunburns so, and bites. So what are some of the big sales, big ticket items going on? Okay, so Bath and Body Works, they, they call it the queen of June sales because that's when you get all your your lotions, your potions, your soaps out. This is the time to stock up. Body Shop also huh. does a sale up to 75% off oh, Bath wow. and Body Works. And the hack from the crazy coupon lady is if you sign up for the email, you'll get those coupons mailed to you. That's typically a sale that's better to do in store because those items are heavy. So if you have to pay for shipping or a minimum purchase, you'll get better deals in store. Okay. Uh, right, video Vic games is the next one. 90% right. off of PC games. Oh. Steam and GOG look for deals starting mid June and late June that go into July, Humble Bundle and Ubisoft. I think they're trying to get people from outside to come back inside, so oh. this is the time, up to 90% off of those, oh. those computer games. And then pet supplies for Pepper and oh. my dog Moose, Chewy has their What's your game. dog's name? His Moose. His name is Moose. He's, he's little, but you know, big and But spirit. mighty. Yeah, <laughs> tiny but mighty. Um, pet supplies. Chewy has their huge sale in June, up to 50% off. Not just for dogs and cats, fish, reptiles, that guinea okay. pig you've always wanted. Oh, right? yes. And the farm animals as well. All right, finally, are there some items that maybe aren't uh, a good time to buy. I guess they're most affordable at this moment. Yes, you want to hold off. If you haven't gotten your air conditioner for the summer, this is not a great time to get it. They're going to go on sale again July, August, September. Brand name clothing, if you're into it, Nordstrom has its big anniversary sale. Okay. The previews start June 29th, it's, uh, but you want to wait until July 15th because that's when the sale actually kicks in. Mm. For anything that's high-end, brand name, that's when you're going to see the big sales. And then on your bigger ticket Amazon devices. Like Alexa? Like Alexa, Echoes, those kinds Got of it. things. Prime Day is coming, Christmas oh, in July. Right. Trey Bodge, our smart shopping expert, predicts it'll be the second week of July, so don't buy that right now. But if you want to get your dad a tablet or some kind of device, mm -hmm. this could be a good time for Father's Day. Right. Vicki, thanks so You're much. Welcome. We love our dads. This morning on today's checklist, we are focusing on summer medical travel safety as we enter prime vacation season with all the time and, and energy that we spend planning the actual trip. It's a good idea to prepare for injuries and illnesses as well. So we brought in an expert, Dr. Kavita Agarwal is a board certified in internal medicine. Dr. Kavita, good to have you good back. Good morning. Hi, thank you for having me. Uh -huh. So before we hop on that plane or hop yeah. on that train or hop in the car, you yeah. say that it's a good idea to talk to a, our doctor and our pharmacist. Why? Absolutely, because think about this, you want to have a summer vacation without getting sick, right? We want to have a fun time. So what I would recommend is checking with your doctor first. Okay. And what they can do is just make sure that you're up to date with your routine vaccines, like the flu and the tetanus shot. And then also your childhood vaccines. You want to make sure that you're up to date with your chicken pox and your polio, mumps, measles, rubella, because there are some areas around the world that have pockets of those infections, and that way you'll be safe and protected. I'm looking, go ahead. I was going to say, and also with your pharmacist, you 
can ask for certain kinds of prescriptions? Um, you, they can give you some recommendations, you know, for over-the-counter meds, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But I think when you speak with your doctor first, they will review which country you're traveling to, okay. and they will review the CDC's recommendations just to make sure that if there are any infections that are brewing in that pocket of the world, that you are safe. So, like, if you're going to the tropical areas, you may want to take bug spray to prevent mosquito-borne infections mm -hmm. like chikungunya, Zika, dengue, malaria, or even Ooh. antibiotics. All of those mm -hmm. things. I'm yes. looking at this next um, uh, this next list here about what kind of documents you need. And I have to be honest, before you travel, things I haven't really thought about, like bringing some of your health documents. Yes, yeah, you so if you have any important health documents, make a copy. It's so easy these days. You have a phone, you can take a picture of it, bring it with you. Um, things such as your COVID vaccine cards or some countries that may still require that. Um, and if you take any regularly prescribed medicines, your doctor can actually prepare a health summary that includes your medical diagnoses, your surgeries, right, your medications, the, in the allergies. language where you go. Yes, yes, not just in English, but in the language of the country that you're traveling that's to. So right. interesting. Yes, and your doctor can review your meds just to make sure that they're approved in the country you're traveling. I will tell to. you, if you've ever had to go to the hospital or go to a doctor in an emergency in another yeah. country, I had to do that once. It's scary. It is you don't scary. really have. You think you can just pull out your insurance card? It no, just doesn't work that way. No. So on that note, you say yes. to consider yes. travelers' health insurance. Absolutely, because the insurance that you buy here doesn't really typically cover care abroad. Yeah. And if you buy it, then at least you'll have affordable health care while traveling. And I've also understood that sometimes you might want to, depending on where you're going, you might want to think about evacuation insurance as well. Because and usually that's covered with your travel insurance. Mm -hmm. Good, yeah, good deal. Absolutely. Masks have been, some people are wearing them. Mm -hmm. I've been traveling a lot. Some people aren't. What is your rule with that and some other general rules? I think now it becomes a personal decision. Talk with your doctor about it. I think if you have chronic conditions that put you at risk for respiratory illnesses and complications, you may want to still wear the mask when you're indoors and in close quarters. But people say when you walk on the plane and when you walk off is when you should wear it, but when actually you're sitting on the plane because of the filter, it's oh, actually... Oh, the filters are really good. The air circulation is good. It really reduces the risk of infection. Okay. Absolutely. What are some other general rules? Um, so if you're going on a long journey, um, something that is like a very long car, plane, train ride, sitting for prolonged periods can cause your blood to pull in your legs and you could be at higher risk of blood clots. So the way to prevent that is get up like every two hours or so mm -hmm. and stretch out those calf muscles, go for a walk. Um, also want to stay hydrated because it's summertime, right? Yeah. You could be out in the sun, you're on the beach, going for a hike, stay hydrated. Um, skip risky foods. Mm, um, yeah. If you're going to be in an area where you don't know about the water, if it's safe, yeah. mm. I say you stick to bottled water, mm -hmm. skip the ice. We've all been yeah. there. Oh my yeah. gosh, you don't yeah. want to be sick while on vacation. <laughs> it's good. Um, wash those hands too. Wash those yeah. hands, yeah. skip right. the street foods. Absolutely. Long flights I wear up. Compression side. Oh, they help. They yeah. help definitely. That's, that's yeah, helped absolutely. Because well, then I've had blood clots. Yeah. So, yeah. what about what are some of the uh, the over the counter medicines we should be bringing with us? And I definitely recommend taking them from here. Because once I was in Paris, my son got sick. We went in, and everything's in French, and you don't, yeah. don't even know right? what's yeah. what. So it's you want to have meds that you know and are comfortable with. So the things that I pack and like to take with me are motion sickness meds, your anti-diarrheals, your cold and flu meds, um, pain relievers, things. cold um, sleep aids. You know, because mm -hmm. uh, especially in a place it's very hard yeah. to sleep. Sure. And if you got a, a red eye, you want to be refreshed the next day. Um, and also going back to the bug spray, you want to choose something that is EPA registered and that way you know it works. And sunscreen, don't forget yeah. the sunscreen. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. makes your trip a little always. smoother and, you know, yeah. when you have these things. Yes. Good yes. advice. And also with the over-the-counter meds, the nice thing is that if you're trying to take your carry-on mm -hmm. and not you know, bring a checked-in luggage, they come in these foil packs that are slim yes. and then you can avoid the liquids and just oh. stick to the tablet so Thank you don't you. get stuck at security. Well, coming up, hacks to make the most out of summer from staying cool to being the hostess with the mostess. Consumer Confidential is coming right back.
right, now that we know how to stay safe and what to buy and when to buy it, let's take things to the next level and make the most of what summer has to offer with hacks for staying cool and how to host the hottest get together. Melanie Berlier, the Spruce Group General Manager, she's, she's here now to help us maximize our summer. Okay, welcome Melanie, I'm gonna bring us over here. Start off with uh, talking to us about these products and how can they help us with our summer plans. There are so many underrated ways to beat the heat this summer. When it comes to energy efficiency, one of the simplest things you can do is swap out all of your old bulbs oh. for the newer ones because they're more energy efficient mm -hmm. and they're not going to emit any heat throughout your home. Nice, so you save money on the bill and they're cooler. What about these devices here? The so the dehumidifier comes in handy because your air conditioning unit is working really, really hard to cool the air and remove moisture from the air. But if you have a dehumidifier oh. on site, the air conditioner isn't going to have to work as hard. Nice, oh, I love that. Okay, and then finally, talk to us about the pillow and sheets here. Sure, so bedding is super important when it comes to your temperature control, mm -hmm. which impacts your quality of sleep. Yes. With a cooling pillow, you're actually going to remove heat from your body and get a better night's rest oh, during I like summer. that. Yeah, it's so important to sleep yeah. with a cool pillow. And at the Spruce, we recommend really lightweight, 100% cotton sheets for the summer months. Okay, excellent. All right, my family loves to be outside. We can't wait to get out there, use our backyard. Tell us about different things that we can do to stay cool, stay hydrated, and have a good time. Sure, so a DIY bar cart is one of our favorite oh, things. Oh, that's a great it's idea. So easy to do, and it's a fan favorite. So you just need, in addition to the bar cart, you need a beverage dispenser mm -hmm. to display your batch cocktail of choice. Mm -hmm. You need super durable tumblers. Forget glass outdoors, please. Yeah. It's much safer to go with a durable plastic. And then you're gonna want an ice bucket. If you're feeling next level, throw some succulents on there and a bowl of lemons and limes. And staying hydrated is important, so getting a big size, getting everyone the liquids that they need. All right, Absolutely. let's talk a little bit about staying safe when you're in the sun. We talked about sunscreen earlier and I think that's so vital. Yeah, one of our favorite things is that we recommend a sun protection station. Mm. You're gonna want to include sun hats, sunglasses, and sunscreen that your family members or visitors can choose from. Okay, and then finally the sun goes down, you still want the party to continue. That's kind of the most fun because then it's cooler. Yes. What are some things to help us get through the summer nights? So we love lighting, wicker lanterns, string lights are beautiful, but when it comes comes to insects, uh -huh. an insect yes. repelling candle is gonna do double duty as both a source of warm, cozy vibes and a bug repellent. Okay, and you know what we did? We bought one of those giant outdoor fans, which really helps to keep the bugs away as well. Yes, those are a great idea too. I love this wicker lamp. All right, Melanie, what about outdoor movies? That's becoming more and more popular. Backyard movie theaters are so easy to create and they're fun for literally everyone of all ages. All you need are a screen, mm -hmm. a projector, an audio system, a content source, and a few cables and wires. You're like, all you need are these seven things. <laughs> but they're, they're pretty affordable these days, yes? They really are, and aside from the technical aspects, all you want to think about are food, seating, and maybe some mosquito netting. But Definitely. everyone has fun in a backyard movie theater moment. Melanie Berlier, thank you so much. So appreciate you. Thank you for having me. All right, well, that is our time for all of us here at NBC News. I'm Vicki Wynn. Be sure to join me for another edition of Consumer Confidential right here on Today All Day. In the meantime, stay safe and cool. The sun is shining and we fired up the grill, y'all. Join me, Jocelyn Delk Adams, for a summer barbecue to remember. As a chef and cookbook author, I love to add a modern twist to classic recipes. With my tips, you can host the outdoor cookout that looks effortless and won't cost a fortune. Bringing all of your loved ones together, it makes the day that much sweeter. Booze, this party's going to be epic. Growing up, I absolutely loved summer barbecues. For me, it just felt like a time to get family and friends together and really just enjoy the weather and each other and some good food. My inspiration for a party comes from a variety of places. I love everything from travel to new restaurants. It all sort of kind of informs all of my ideas and decision making when I'm throwing a party. I guess you could call me an events rebel. I really love to break the rules. 
And I love that because it's really fun to sort of have something unexpected at your event. The first thing that's most important with creating an event that you absolutely love is starting with the vibe and building it with your personality. If you could bottle my personality, it would probably be like a bright orange color, so that's gonna be all through this event. I love throwing barbecues outside. If you've got a pool, which we happen to have, like why wouldn't you set an entire event around that? You know you are always at a great party when the playlist is hot. So I wanted to focus on creating a playlist that had a lot of fun, energetic songs that made people want to get up and party. I love games at events. Seriously, if we do not have games at my event, it's not one of my events. I love everything from activities that I actually make up. I mean, it's all about making sure that your guests have a good time and games help with that. Next, make sure that you stay organized. I am truly type A, y'all, okay? I am a person who lives and breathes by spreadsheets. When I'm thinking about an event, I start with the spreadsheet so I can stay organized, keep my guests in there, keep what I've ordered, keep what I'm serving. Literally every single detail goes in that spreadsheet. For your guest list, it's truly important that you spend a lot of time thinking about who you want seated at your table. I decided to make this party all about the amazing gals in my life. I really wanted it to be this mix of amazing women that I appreciate and who I'm inspired by. And finally, create a unique menu. When I start to think about my menu planning for my barbecue, I really wanna knock my guest socks off. I love to incorporate things that are in season. So a couple recipes I'm thinking about are maybe a watermelon salad. Watermelon is in season right now, so that's gonna be so fresh. Also, corn is in season. So, and I've got this like amazing corn pudding, but the key is the, the corn is grilled. So it's like a nice time to actually use the grill, get some nice char on that corn, and actually give it some nice texture and bite. I think I know exactly how I want this day to flow, so let's get in the kitchen and start getting that menu going. For this barbecue, I selected some of my favorite recipes that I'm gonna show you how to make. First, we're gonna start with my simple ribs. Then we're gonna move on to my elote fried corn pudding from my new cookbook, Everyday Grand, along with my watermelon salad, and then finally, my berry rhubarb punch. We're gonna get started with my simple ribs recipe, and it starts with a dry rub. I've got some Cajun seasoning here. I've got some kosher salt, gotta get some nice salt in there. I've got some mustard powder. And then I've got onion and garlic powder. I'm gonna add both of those in here. Black pepper, some smoked paprika, and I've got some chili powder, cumin, I love cumin in literally everything. And finally, I've got some brown sugar to add some sweetness. And then we're just gonna do a quick whisk of all of this, combining it. So I started making my own spice rubs at home when I realized how easy it was to do. Like, you could literally just go in your pantry, grab all of your favorite ingredients, and pull together something that's explosive flavor-wise. I happen to like a lot of different flavors in my dry rub because I want a lot of different sensations to happen when you bite into that rib, right? You want that sweet, you want that heat, you want that nuance of flavor, and so all of these different components are gonna pull that off. And once that's combined, we're gonna get that on our ribs. These are beef ribs, and I'm going to grab some oil spray. So I like to use the oil spray. It's a little bit more controlled, and it just kind of keeps things a tiny bit cleaner during this process. The oil is going to become an adhesive for our dry rub, and then we're gonna start to add our dry rub right over our ribs, and you can add as much or as little as you want. The purpose of a dry rub is really to get that flavor penetrated into our ribs. And it's gonna take a little time because we're not breaking this down with what you would usually find in a wet rub. I'm gonna flip these over. We're gonna do another spray. And then we're gonna get that dry rub all up in there as well and you really wanna push it into the meat so it really penetrates and you get all of that flavor. 
My favorite thing about barbecues are definitely the ribs. It's my favorite recipe. It's the quintessential barbecue recipe, right? So I think that all of my side dishes are gonna be the perfect complement to this main dish because this is really hearty, but it's got so much flavor, but everything else is sort of light and refreshing. So it's a perfect complement. All right, these look nice and rubbed down. So I did a quick rinse of my hands and now we're gonna get these ready to go into the fridge. I've got some heavy duty foil because we wanna make sure that every little crevice, everything is covered so we really get that marinade to seep in. I'm gonna go one rack at a time here. Really get it covered. The ribs are wrapped and ready to go. I'm going to add these to my baking sheet, and then I'm gonna pop this in the fridge for about six hours at least, so we can really get that marinade in there. And then we'll be ready to grill. All right, our ribs are marinating, and now when we come back, we're gonna get into our sides. While our ribs are marinating, I'm gonna get started on my elote fried corn pudding. This recipe was inspired by my trip to Mexico City and I wanted to really sort of mix in some of that authentic Mexican flavor with some of my southern roots. The first step is in grilling our corn. I've got some shucked corn here and I'm going to add a little vegetable oil to the outside of it so we can make sure that this doesn't stick to the grates once we're grilling. Now I'm gonna take these out to the grill. I love adding in that char and that bite of grilled corn and it's an amazing way to use it while it's in season too. Now that we've grilled our corn, it's time to get started on our filling. So I'm going to start here with some Mexican crema that's gonna go into our big bowl. This is so rich and creamy, it's gonna add so much flavor. And then I've got some melted butter. We've got four eggs here, and it's best that you crack them outside of the big bowl, so if you get any shell, it doesn't get into your major mixture here. Now I want to zest some lime so I can add in some citrus flavor. It's really gonna brighten this up. Now I've got some sugar. If you've ever had corn pudding in the South, you know it's a little bit sweet, so we gotta add in that sweet. I'm adding in some cornstarch. This is gonna help thicken everything up. And then a few spices to add some additional flavor. I've got some garlic powder, and I've got some cumin. Now this is where I get to add our grilled corn that we took off the cob. You can get that nice bite and that texture from those kernels. This is creamed corn that you can find just right in the can in your grocery store. And it's a very different texture from that grilled corn we made earlier. 
We're also gonna add in some cotilla cheese. I'm going to mix all of this together, make sure it's nice and combined. Before we add this to our casserole dish, I'm just gonna lightly spray this so we can make sure that it doesn't stick. And then we're just gonna pour all of our corn pudding mixture right into our casserole dish. I'm gonna add some foil to this so we can have a nice even bake and it doesn't brown too much. Now I'm gonna pop this in the oven and we're gonna let this set up and get so nice and beautiful and brown and then we'll be ready to serve. Our corn pudding is out of the oven and let's check it out. Oh my goodness. You can just see all of that grilled corn that's come to the top and this sort of creamy, custardy texture. I like to add some decorations and really take it to another level. I like to add a little bit more of the cotilla cheese. And then I also like to strategically place a few little limes here, little lime slices. Adds a little color as well. I'm gonna add some cilantro too. And then finally, I'm gonna sprinkle on a little tahini, and that little brightness with that chili and lime flavor is just gonna take this up to like a whole nother level. It's so good. Our corn pudding is ready to serve, and I know the guests are gonna love this. Now it's time to get started on my watermelon salad. This watermelon salad is so perfect for this barbecue because watermelon's in season, it's sweet, it's juicy, and it reminds me of childhood when I used to have watermelon every summer. Also, this recipe is important to me because, you know, watermelon sometimes can be pretty controversial for black people. We can feel uncomfortable sometimes having it because of the history associated with it. So with this recipe, I really wanted to sort of say, we can reclaim it. We can feel comfortable having it again, and I hope that it brings up more positive light towards this food. The first step to making my watermelon salad is pickling some onions, and this is gonna give that nice tart flavor. People have no idea how easy it is to pickle onions at home, and I'm gonna show you. So I've got some water. I'm gonna add this to my little pot here, some white vinegar, some sugar, and some salt and then I'm gonna crank on our heat here. And we're gonna let this get to about medium-high heat. We wanna really let that sugar dissolve and then it's gonna be ready for pickling our onions. Our sugar has dissolved. I'm just gonna pop a garlic clove in here for some additional flavor. And then I'm gonna pour this right over our onions. Yes, 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 yes. I'm gonna cover this up. And now this is gonna go in the fridge for about two hours. Now we're gonna make our chipotle dressing. This recipe starts with our shallots. I'm going to add some oil. We wanna get our shallots sizzling in this medium heat so we can get them nice and tender. All right, these look good to go. I'm gonna add these into our blender. Now I'm gonna add in some lime juice some red wine vinegar, got a little honey too. Dijon mustard, some chipotle, I'm gonna add this right on in. Nice kick of flavor, we love that. And then finally, I've got some salt and pepper. Okay. Look at that beautiful color. You can tell when the dressing is done because it's nice and smooth. You see that chipotle has blended in and it's thickened up a bit. And this is gonna be absolutely perfect on our watermelon salad, y'all. I've got my watermelon here and I'm gonna start breaking this down. You wanna make sure you have a super sharp knife. And then also, under my cutting board, I've got a little surprise here. I've got some wet paper towel right up under it to make sure that this doesn't slip and slide. It's gonna make sure that this stays in place. To begin, I'm gonna cut off the ends of my watermelon. And then I also like to cut straight down the middle. This makes it easier when you're dealing with a much larger watermelon. You can break it down much quicker. 
Oh yeah, look at that. I like to get it to a stable position as quickly as possible because it's much easier to maneuver and then it's not gonna roll around a lot. We want to start to take off the sides. So we're gonna remove the rind and you can actually start to do this based on just looking at the top and seeing where it guides you. And as you remove that, just put it right into your discard ball. We're gonna get off as much of this as possible and then we're gonna go right back around once we're done and then just clean up and get off anything that we didn't before. And then once you have all of those edges and it's pretty bright and red, this is where we're gonna actually start to cut it into strips. We're making a salad, so I'm gonna go for bigger pieces. And I'm gonna take these ones in the center and then we're gonna break these down into cubes. I'm gonna cut again into wedges. And then I'm gonna cut right across again. And there you go. Now it's time to assemble our salad. I've got our cubed watermelon here and I'm just gonna add this into a big bowl. I'm gonna also add in some cucumber. I've got some heirloom tomatoes, which are quite special. The seeds are passed down from farmers every single season, so it's a special sort of hybrid there. Going to mix all of this together. And now I'm gonna add in some greens. I've got some mint, some arugula, and some basil. Sprinkle all of that in. Just kind of mix that in as well. And this is such a beautiful, colorful salad. All right. Now we're gonna add in that dressing we made earlier. Then I'm gonna do a big toss and get all of these ingredients to just really kind of soak in that dressing. What works so great about this salad is you're just going to get so many different flavor profiles. Like that sweetness from the watermelon is just going to complement that chipotle spice with that you get from the dressings. It's really sort of well balanced because of all of those flavors. Now I'm gonna transfer this to our pretty bowl. Perfect. And then I'm gonna just dress this up with our pickled onion. I'm just gonna place a few right on top. So gorgeous. And then add a little of our feta cheese. And this is gonna be a hit, y'all. This is ready to serve. If you've ever been to basically any party or barbecue, you know you gotta have a good punch and this one is great. So I've got some water here that's boiling and we're gonna use this to create a simple syrup for this recipe. And simple syrups are usually just water and sugar and then you can add in whatever you want so you can really sort of bring in some additional flavor and that's what we're gonna do here. So I'm adding in our sugar to our water and we're gonna get that to boiling temperature. And then I'm gonna add in some berries, some strawberries, some raspberries. And then finally, because rhubarb is in season right now, I'm going to add some rhubarb. I love to work it in drinks like this and it sort of brings down that sweetness of those berries and it's just so delicious. And finally, I'm gonna add in some mint. I'm just gonna stir all of this to combine and then I'm going to let this come to boiling so I can really let that sugar and all of this sort of dissolve and thicken up. Once it starts to boil, you can see that color developing, that bright red color that is just gonna make that punch just pop, okay, on that barbecue table. It's gonna be so beautiful. This has been going for about 20 minutes and it's perfectly thickened and that syrup is like delicious. And we wanted to make sure that all that sugar dissolved. So now that it's cooled down a bit, I'm gonna go ahead and strain it. This is our berry rhubarb syrup and we're ready to assemble our punch. I'm gonna take my syrup here and add this right into my pitcher. I've also got some ginger ale. And I've got a little vodka here too. Gotta have a little fun. This is mama's drink right here. <laughs> All right, and then I'm gonna add in some berries as well. This is gonna be just like a nice garnish. And then do a nice little stir here to combine everything. Oh yeah, 
That's perfect. Pour a little into this glass. You can see that gorgeous color. Those berries fly in. Look how beautiful this is. I cannot wait to serve this to our guests. And I'm actually gonna take some of the same punch and I'm gonna turn them into popsicles. Who doesn't love a popsicle during the summer? So I know they're gonna absolutely fall in love with this whole idea. I've showed you how to make most of our menu items and I've got a few more tricks up my sleeve. I'm gonna be serving a peach salad and also a family favorite potato salad. It's almost party time, guys. Next, when we come back, we are heading out to the grill. It's the day of the barbecue, y'all. I am so excited. It's a beautiful sunny day and I cannot wait for my guests to see the spread. My first two guests are Mercedes and Kelly. I work with both of these ladies and they are like sisters to me, so I had to invite them to my barbecue. My next two guests are Lola and Amy. Lola was my college roommate, and Amy, she's a newer friend I met through blogging. Chanel, we met each other working together ages ago, and Ariana, she's my sorority sister. <laughs> my last guest, well, you can't have a barbecue without inviting your mama, okay? So she definitely had to come. Mom, so good to see you. Anyone ready to eat? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's make our way to the table. <laughs> this is my watermelon salad that's in my cookbook, Everyday Grand. Enjoy. I love it. This is the main event. Simple ribs, even though they don't take a lot of effort, they taste amazing, y'all. You will love them. All right, ladies, cheers. 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 Yeah. Enjoy, dig in. So what do you guys think of the potato salad? Well, so this is really good. Really good. Delicious. Yeah. Look. Mama approves, that's it. If I say it's good, it's good. Let me tell you how long we worked on that recipe. Oh, there is a story with that, okay? We tested it <laughs> over and over and over, I think maybe at least 20 times. At least. Oh, and my mom and dad, they were like, nope, needs this. Nope, needs more of this. Before it went into the book, 
they were still nervous about it. I was right. like, it's we going into were. the book. Yeah. Right. But it's Regardless. been a hit. Everyone has loved it. Right. Like, you did your thing, Joshua. Yeah. Okay, it's time for some games. Okay, this first one we're gonna play, it's called Celebrity in a Bag. Yeah. You got all these little names in here, and these are different celebrities, and you can ask all of us yes or no questions so you can guess who the celebrity is that you have. Oh. 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 Is it a girl? Yes. yes. Okay. Is it an actor? Yes. yes. Does she have a Grammy? Yes. Yes. yes, and he got Emmy, Grammy, have, oh, Oscar, oh, Tony. Tony. Oh, cool, I did not know that, <laughs> is what that meant. Is it Jennifer Hudson? Yes! Yeah. 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 All right, guys, we've got popsicles. Woo! We've got a berry rhubarb, a peach sweet tea, and pink Woo! lemonade. I cannot thank you enough for coming and enjoying my good food yeah. and enjoying the company. It ain't over yet because we are going to get on the dance floor. Oh, okay. Let's bust the move. All right. Okay.